Pero bago tayo magpatuloy ay pakilike ang ating video. Ganon din ang subscribe button. Pati na rin ang bell icon para lagi kayong updated sa mga parating ko pang mga uploads. The Fix Marriage Ito ang naging simula ng lahat sa buhay na Drake at Ava. Pagaman mahal ni Ava noon pa si Drake, naging blessing sa kanya na ipakasal sila ng kanika nilang mga magulang. Sa simula pa lang ipinangako na ni Drake na gagawin niya miserable ang buhay ni Ava. Pero paano kung dumating ang araw na maaring mawala ito sa kanya? Kung kaya na nun tiyong tito nakakapasok sa puso niya, sa kanya nalaman na nasa pangalim ang buhay nito na nakatakdang maglayo sa kanya rito. Will fate be on his side? Where's Ava? Napapitlag si Ava nang marinig niya at dumadagong doon natinig ng kanyang asawang si Drake sa buong kabahayan. She literally stopped breathing for a moment. Natauhan lamang siya na muling marinig ang galit na boses ng asawa. She knew that tone very well or should she say, she knew him very well. Tell her to bring my coffee into the library in five minutes. Agad binitawan ni Ava ang hawak ng sandok. She saw fear in Yaya and Deng's eyes. Alam niyang para sa kanyang takot na nararamdaman ng matandang babae. Yaya, don't worry. I'll be fine. Then she smiled at her. Kinuha sa kanya na isa pang katulong ang sandok na hawak. She quickly prepared his coffee and then she went upstairs. Mabuti nang mas maaga sa five minutes na dalhin ang kape ni Drake. She knew what her husband was capable of doing. Bahagyang napahinto si Ava sa mabilis na pag-akit na makatapatapat sa malaking wedding picture nila mag-asawa na nakasabit sa gilid ng hagdan. Napatitig siya sa picture na kasulat sa ibaba niyon. Tatlong taon pa lang nakakalipas mula nang walang pagtutul siyang sumangayin sa kagustuhan ng kanyang mga magulang na ipakasal siya kay Drake, the infamous Drake Sullivan, the most sought after bachelor in the whole province of Zambales. Kabilang si Drake sa famous Sullivan clan na inaasam ni naman na makabanggang siko o makilala man lang and women of all ages drooled over the youngest Drake. These women were not just after his money. Most of them were after his good looks and oozing sex appeal. Of course, she was not an exception. Ngunit may isang bagay siyang pinagkaiba sa lahat ng mga babaeng naghahangal kay Drake. Women only wanted him. She, on the other hand, was in love with him. She fell in love with him the first time she laid eyes on him 10 years ago. She was 18 then, while he was 20. Mula ng araw na yun, wala na siyang iba na hinangad pa kundi ang mapansin ni Drake. Well, she got her wish. She was now Mrs. Drake Sullivan. Yes, he was hers. Legally, literally, and figuratively. Dagling pinigal ni Ava ang pagdalin ng mga laala. Masyado na rin siyang nawili sa pagtitig sa larawan nila. Totoy lumagpas siya ng ilang minuto. She opened the door of the library without even knocking. She saw Drake's profile from the doorway. He wore nothing else except his boxers. Ilang ulit na ba niyang nakita ang asawa sa ganong ayos? Nonetheless, she was still stunned by his perfect physique. Five minutes too long for you? His eyes were burning with contempt and anger as he looked at her. I'm sorry. She couldn't find the right Drake words. She couldn't even move her feet. He was so achingly beautiful and she lost her mind just by looking at him. Kumuha ito ng t-shirt at jogging pants sa closet na naroon at mabilis na nagbihis. She walked towards the table and placed a cup of coffee on top of it. Pagkalapag sa kape, eksaktong pumingit sa Drake paharap sa kanya. Agad na nag-iwas ang tingin si Ava. Ganon din ang ginawa ng asawa, kaya nagbuka tuloy na hinaharangan nilang isa't isa. She gazed up at him only to see fire in his eyes. What are you up to? Galit na tanong ni Drake. He grabbed her shoulders and shook her angrily. Gab, nasasaktan ako, she said fearfully. Well, that's good. Malupit ang mga mata ng asawa na diretsyo nakatingin sa kanyang mga mata. He even grabbed her arms tighter sa paraang tila ba gusto siyang durugin ni Drake. Drake! Napapaigik na sa sakit si Ava. Hindi na rin siya makatingin sa mata ng asawa. More than the way he grabbed her, the look on his eyes were enough to kill her. Please, Drake, please. She wouldn't be surprised if she would end up handicapped after this encounter. Damn! He pushed her away. Pati hayang bumagsak sa sig sa Altea. Unang balakang. She stayed still for a while. Her fall was so painful, just like the other time he made her fall. Hindi na nga niya mabilang kung pang ilan lang isang yon. 
she really did not mind all these falls for this only caused her physical pain. Unlike her other fall from him, dahil hindi katawan niya bumabagsak at nahuhulog, kundi ang kanyang puso mismo. She looked up at him. Hindi nababasan kahit kaunti ang apoy sa mga mata ni Drake. Sa pakiwari ni Ava, lalong nadagdagan iyon. Ngunit may iba pang emosyon na sumalit sa mga mata ng asawa maliban sa galit. Something like remorse? Ngunit imposible yon. He could feel everything but remorse. Maybe she just imagined it. Remember this, Ava Dominguez. The next time na suwain mo ulit ako, hindi lang yan ang makakakuha mo. Then he forced her to stand up. Now go! She ran out of the room without even looking back. She ran into her own room. Pagkapasok na pagkapasok ni Ava roon ay agad nilak niya ang pinto at dumapa sa ibabaw ng kama. She buried her face against the pillows. Doon niya pinakawalan ang kanina pang pinipigil ng mga luha. Impit na impit lamang kanyang ginawang pag-iyak dahil ayaw niya makakuha ng atensyon ni naman. She had no intention of getting others involved in their marital problem. Ginusto niya iyon kaya dapat nang napangatawa na ni Ava. She wanted this more than anything else in this world. She wanted Drake. She loved him more than anything else in his whole damn world. But their marriage was a lie from the very start. It was just a sheet of paper for Drake. Ngunit sa kanya, hindi. Their marriage was everything to her. She still remembered how the marriage that seemed so impossible at first became possible. Unang nakita ni Ava kay Drake sa isang malaking pagtitipon sa bayan ng St. Austin sa Iba. His father was a very famous businessman in Zambales. Sa bawat bayan, may pag-aari ang ama ni Drake na hasyenda. O hindi kaya, mga mansion at beach resort. She saw him in the middle of the crowd. Hindi alam ni Ava kung bakit sa dinami-rami ng tao ng gabing yon, si Drake lamang nakakuha ng kanyang atensyon. But then again, she couldn't help it. Lalo pati ni lamang siyang nagsasmoon kay Drake. She could see that most of the females had their eyes set on him. But all through the night, he acted as if he was not aware of it. O tagal lamang sigurong hindi aware si Drake. His nonchalant manner made him look even more attractive. She would never, ever forget the first time their eyes met. He had the most beautiful black eyes she had ever seen. Since then, his eyes hunted her. And one morning, she just woke up and realized she had already fallen in love with him. Since then, she attended every function in the whole town. Dahil sigurado si Avang nararoon din si Drake. For years, she talked to him and dreamt about him. Five years to be exact. Ngulit ni minsan di ba lang sila nagkakilala ng personal. All of her hopes died when she heard the news about him and his rumored girlfriend, a beautiful socialite with a bad reputation. Nagkaroon ng pagkakataon si Ava na makita si Drake kasama si Savannah. She was introduced to them by his parents. Noon lang niya nalaman na kaibigan pala ng kanyang mga magulang ang mag-asawang Sullivan. Nice to meet you, Senorita Ava, Gabriel said as he raised her hand and kissed it. Nais niyang sawatahin si Drake sa pagtawag sa kanya ng Senorita. Hindi siya kailanman nagpapatawag ng ganon kahit sa mga katulong nila. Ngunit hindi na naituloy ni Ava ang anumang balak dahil sa kanyang naramdamang tila may kuryenteng gumapang mula sa mga labi ni Drake papunta sa kanyang kamay, paakyat sa bawat himaymay ng kanyang kalamnan. Biglang nahila ni Ava ang kanyang kamay. She saw his girlfriend's brows rise in annoyance. He on the other hand simply shrugged his shoulders. Hinilang palayo si Ava ng mama ni Drake. Something about the meeting felt very awkward. Parang hindi gaanong pinansin ng mga magulang ni Drake ang nobe ng binata. Lumingon si Ava. Nakita na gahalikan si na Drake at Savannah para bang walang ibang tao sa paligid. Her chest tightened in pain. Mukhang wala na siyang chance na mapansin ni Drake. His love for his girlfriend was very obvious. Since then, she tried her best to forget him, but to no avail. Hinayaan lang ni Ava ang kanyang sariling mahalin si Drake sa malayo dahil di rin naman niya alam kung paanong patitigilin ang puso't isip sa pagmamahal sa binata. She did not believe there was only hope until one day, her parents and Drake's parents talked to her about their plans. At first, she thought it was ridiculous, but she knew in her heart, of hearts, that she wanted it too. Malinaw na malinaw pa sa alaala ni Ava ang lahat pagkatapos, the wedding, Drake raging anger, is promise. You may now kiss the bride, said the priest. She saw fire in Drake's eyes. She couldn't help but shiver at the intensity of his stare. I promise, he whispered softly for her ears alone to hear, that I would do everything within my power to make your life miserable. Your life will me will be leaving hell. Mine already is. Hindi ako mapakapayag na ako lamang ang mahihirapan. Then, he sealed his promise with a punishing kiss. Kumarap-kurap si Ava. 
sa bahaging iyon ng alaala. She wiped her cheeks with the back of her hand, but the tears continued to stream down her face. Mahinang katok sa pinto ang gumising kay Ava. How could she be so stupid? Masyado siyang maraming trabaho para matulog hanggang ganong oras. Dali-daling binuksan niya ang pinto nang marinig ang tinig ni Yaya Adeng. Pumasok ang matandang babae dala ang tray na umuusok ng mga pagkain. Yaya, hindi yun na po dapat nilalayan dito. Hindi lang naitago sa tinig ni Ava ang pag-aalala. Umalis na si Drake, wala ka nang dapat alalahanin. Pagkalapag nito ng mga pagkain sa mesa, tiningnan sa ni Yaya ang deng ng mataman. Naiiling na tumikhem si Ava. Yaya, may sasabihin po ba kayo? Umupo ang matandang babae sa gilid ng kama. Ayoko makialam, nalalam ko namang sa pagitan lamang ninyo ito mag-asawa. Bumuntong hininga ito, tira ba ay ng dugtungan pa ang sinabi? Yaya? Gusto ko magalit kay Drake sa uli ng pagtrato niya sa'yo, kung di nga lamang kilala ko na siya mula pa pagkabata. Tilingnan sa ng matama ni Yaya Andeng. At kahit ano pa mang sirkumstansya ng pagpapakasal ninyo, mag-asawa pa rin kayo sa tunay at totoong kahulugan niyon. Gusto ko rin malaman mo na humahanga ako sa wakas na pagmamahal na nararamdaman mo para kay Drake. Gulat na napatingin si Ava sa matanda. Hindi niya alam ko anong kanyang sasabihin. Yaya Andeng seemed to know a lot of things. Napangiti sa kanya si Yaya Andeng. Nakikita ko sa mga mata mo, tuwing tititigan mo siya ang pagmamahal, imbes na takot. Hindi yun nagbago sa labang tatlong taong pagkasama ninyo. Bagkos, mas dumalim pa marahil. Unti-unting napawi na matanda, tila ba mainisip na nakakalungkot na bagay. Hindi ko maintindihan kung paano nagagawa ni Drake na bahalawalain ka. Hindi ko rin alam kung paano siyang nagbago ng ganoon. Sadyang napakalaki na ipinagbago niya. Di mo ko si Ava upang itago, alam mo mo ang mga luha sa kanya mga mata. Hinawa ka ni Yaya Andeng ang kanyang kamay. Ngunit ito, ang tinitiya ko sa iyo, Iha. Nagangat sa tingin sa matanda. Mamahalin ka rin niya isa sa mga araw na to. Tanga lamang ang lalaking di makikita kung gaano kakaganda sa pandoob at sa panlabas. At hindi tanga si Drake. Matagal nang nakalabas si Yaya Andeng. Nakatulala pa rin si Ava. Tama ang Yaya sa pagsasabing mahal niya si Drake. Mabuti pa si Yaya Andeng. Nakikita sa kanyang mga mata ang pag-ibig niya kay Drake. Ngunit si Drake hindi mo na nakikita ni katiting ng kanyang pagtingin. Duda rin si Ava kung nakikita ba talaga siya ng asawa. But she still loved him. Ngunit ang umasang mamahalin din siya ni Drake, isa yung panaginip. Panaginip na hindi magiging totoo kailanman. Isang babae lamang ang minahal ni Drake. At minamahal pa rin ang kanyang asawa ang babaeng yon hanggang ngayon. Hindi si Ava yon at kailanman hindi magiging siya. Kulang na lang madapa si Ava habang nagmamadali sa pagbaba ng hagdan. She heard the sound of Drake car outside. Sinalubong niya sa pintuan ng asawa. He automatically handed her his coat and his attached case kapag kwa nilagpasan siya ni Drake. Nagkukumahog na sumunod si Ava sa asawa. I want my coffee in five minutes. I'm not having dinner. Sawang-sawa na ako magsagang kumain ng mga luto mo. Dire-diretso sa pagkakit sa hagdan si Drake. Inabot na isang kasambahay ang mga gamit ng kanyang asawa. Isang nagpapasalamat ng iti naman ang isinukli ni Ava sa kasambahay. Mabilis na nagtimpla siya ng kape at dila iyon sa library. Mula na ikasal sila ay mabibilang sa mga daliri ang pagkakataong natulog sa silid nila si Drake. Ang library ang tayong lugar kung saan madalas namamalagi ang asawa kapag nasa bahay. Naroon ang mahalagang gamit ni Drake. Ang master's bedroom hindi talaga matatawag na master's bedroom. Why? She was the only one who slept there. She knocked on the door when she reached the library. Hindi sumagot si Drake kaya lakas toob na binaksan ni Ava ang pinto. Nakita niya nakasubsob si Drake sa mesa. Natutulog marahil. Dahan-dahan pumasok si Ava at nilapag sa coffee table ang dalang kape. Kapag kwa nilapitan niya si Drake, he must be so exhausted. Napakaamo na mukha ng asawa habang natutulog. The exact opposite of what he looked like when he was awake. Gustong-gustong haplosin ni Ava ang mukha ni Drake, ngunit pinigil niya ang kanyang sarili. Dumakunting niya sa picture frame sa ibaba ng table ng asawa. Sadness filled her heart when she recognized the people in the picture. Si Drake yon kasama ni Savannah, ang dating girlfriend ng asawa. Of course, Savannah was still the one for him. Sa alim po lang talaga si Ava. Kapag nakangiti ang dalawa sa larawan, buhay na buhay ang iti ni Drake. That was Drake three years ago, full of life, full of love. She became teary-eyed. Dinampot ni Ava ang larawan at pinagbas ng maigi yun. Gusto niya palaging nasa kanyang isip ang iti ni Drake. There was nothing in this world that she desired more than to see him smile. His happiness was her only prayer. He was everything to her. 
What do you think you're doing? Sa gulat, nabitawan ni Ava ang hawak na frame dahil ang upang mabasag yun. Sa labis sa takot, ang mamadaling dinampot niya ang mga bubog. Sanhi upang masugatan siya. Drake pushed her away. Don't touch it! How dare you do this? You're sick, Ava. You're very sick. Hindi niya alam kung manhid lang ba talaga siya, but she did not feel any pain in her hand. Mas naramdaman niya ang kilot sa kanyang dibdib. Muling dumapit si Ava upang tulungan ng asawa. Drake, get out of here! Tinabig siya ni Drake with more force this time. Pagtayo, hindi napansin ni Ava ang mesa. Nauntog siya ron. Drake looked at her again with fire and contempt in his eyes. I said get out! Huwag mo kong piniting kalad ka rin ka palabas dito, Ava! She almost crawled her way out of the library. She felt drowsy. Makirat na ng kanyang ulo sa nauntog sa mesa. Sinilubong siya ni Yaya Andeng sa puno ng hagdan. Sus Mariosep, Ava! Ano nangyari sa ulo mo? Sina po niya ang bahagi ng kanyang ulong kumikirot. She saw blood in her eyes. Hands then everything went black. When Ava opened her eyes, she saw Yaya Andeng's worried face. Bahagya pa siyang nahihilo. Nonetheless, she felt alright. The memories of what happened last night flooded her mind. The picture, Drake's anger, the blood in her hands. Kinapa ni Ava ang kanyang ulo. May bandage yun. Kamusta na ang pakiramdam mo, Iha? Tanong ni Yaya Andeng. Pulong-pulo ng pag ang mukha ng matanda. Ngumiti si Ava kay Yaya Andeng bilang reassurance. Maayos na po ako, Yaya. Her throat constricted with sudden sadness. Sigurado ka ba? Maliit lang naman ang sugat mo pero hindi natin dapat baliwanain. She smiled at her again. Bumangon si Ava. Tilingnan sa salamin ang parte ng kanyang ulo na may bandage. Maliit lang talaga yun at bahagyan na lang makirot. Ngunit kaya naman niyang indahin. Huwag na po kayo mag-arala. Mabuti na po talaga ang pakiramdam ko. Nilapitan niya si Yaya Andeng at inakba yan. Si Drake po. Umalis na kanina pa. Siya ang tumawag na doktor kagabi na siyang gumamot sa iyo. Ano ba talagang nangyari? Aksidente po, Yaya. Natuwa si Ava sa nalaman. Kahit pa paano pa na hindi siya pinabayaan ni Drake. The thought brought her new strength. Nagdududang tinitigan siya ni Yaya Andeng. Talaga bang aksidente? Hindi kaya kagagawa niya ni Drake? Umiling si Ava. Hindi po, Yaya. Aksidente po talagang nangyari. Hindi po si Drake ang may kasalanan. Aksidente lang po talaga. Halatang di pa rin kumbinsida ang matanda, ngunit tumanguna lamang. Bababa ka ba? O gusto mo dala na lang kita ng pagkain dito? Talong nito kapag kwan. Huwag na po, Yaya. Bababa na lang po ako. Ani Ava. Pagkalabas ni Yaya Andeng, muli siyang bumalik sa harap ng salamin. Dahanda nilalas ni Ava ang bandage. Maliit lamang sugat kaya ng sabi ni Yaya Ava. She touched the wand. Sa tansya niya, ilang araw lamang nagagaling ayon. The wand was too small compared to the wand in her heart. Yun ang unang beses na nagkasugat si Ava sa loob ng mahigit tatlong taong pagkasama nila ni Drake. Marami na siyang naranasang sakit sa loob ng tatlong taong yun. Emotional, mental, verbal, name it. She must be crazy because despite everything, she was still holding on to this marriage. Obviously, he did not love her and everything was not likely to change. But it was alright. Mahal naman ni Ava si Drake. Her love was enough for the both of them. Enough for her to live happily with him forever. Eight years ago, she wished to love him. Now she had all the right and all the chances to love him. She didn't know why she loved him more than herself. Blame it on her heart. Halos hindi humihinga si Ava habang hinihintay ang maging reaksyon ni Drake. They were having dinner and she was the one who cooked. Yun ang gusto nito. Ang siya ang magluto, maglinis, maglaba at mag-asikasa ng lahat ng pangailangan ng asawa. She thought it would make her miserable, but deep in her heart, she was glad she had to do those things for him. Kahit pa nga madalas panguri at pamamintas ang inaabot niya mula kay Drake. Napapitlag si Ava nang padaskol na binitawin ng asawa ang mga hawak na kubiertos. This meal is the worst! Maramig pa sa yelang pagkakabigkas ng mga bawat salita ni Drake. Wala ka pa rin alam sa pagdududo hanggang ngayon. You're hopeless! He looked at her furiously. She couldn't stand the sight of him, not because he was angry, but because he was breathtakingly attractive despite his anger. Hindi maintindihan ni Ava ang sarili kung bakit hindi niya magawang magalit o matakot ng totoo sa asawa. You've been cooking for so long, yet you haven't improved, not even one bit. Mabigat ang bawat pagsak ng mga salita ni Drake. You're getting worse by the minute. His eyes were full of contempt. He kept on bubbling angrily. Hindi nagsinkin sa kanya mga sinabi ng asawa. 
Mas nabalas siyang pagmasta ng mukha ni Dave. He had changed a lot during the past two years. He looked more mature now, but it did not lessen his appeal. Instead, it only added to his raw. Gone was the teasing and naughty look on his face that she assumed as his trademark. Nagupulim ay medyo malagong buhok ni Drake. He now sported a thin beard and mustache. Sa halip makapangit ang bigote at balbas, nakatagdag pa mga yon sa apil ng asawa. Sadyang gwapo si Drake nung una pa man niyang nakita ang asawa, but he even looked even more handsome now. Maturing suited him. His deep dark eyes that were almost full of contempt only added to his manly appeal. Ang pinkish tight lips ni Drake ay tila nag-aanyaya ng halik. His perfectly sculpted nose was proud and arrogant. Muli, bumalik ang paningin ni Ava sa mga labi ng asawa. She remembered how those beautiful lips... What the hell are you thinking? Nagling natauhan si Ava mula sa pagpapanta siya na ibagsak ni Drake ang mga kamay sa mesa. Napalinga siya sa paligid. Halata ang pagkagulot at takot sa mukha ng mga kasambahay, lalo pa ni Aya Anding. She looked at Drake. Doble ng galit kanina nakikita ang galit ni Ava sa mukha ngayon ng asawa. I'm sorry. Napanunok siya nang sabi kig sa kanyang nalamunan. I should be the one to know when my rage has actually gotten to you. Ani Drake, punong-puno ng pagkayamot ang tinig. Drake, I... There's a grand gathering tomorrow at the El Palacio. Mom and Dad's golden anniversary. Putol nito sa sasabihin ni Ava. Sa wakas, makakakain din ako ng totoong pagkain. Nanguuyang pagkakatingin nito sa kanya mga nilugto. She spent hours preparing those meals. She prepared them with so much love because they were for him. I'll pick you out tomorrow at 5. Wear your best dress, dear wife. We're gonna show the whole world how happy we are in this hell we're living in. Tila naglalagos hanggang sa kaluluwa ni Ava ang mga titig ng asawa. You can showcase your great acting skills again. Doon ka naman magaling, di ba? He stood up next to her. Mariing siya sa braso ni Drake. Show the world how happy you are with me. I'm you, Ava. Don't do anything, stupid, or you will regret it for the rest of your damn life. Padaskol na binitawan siya at iniwan ang asawa. Mariing napapikit si Ava sa gilid ng mesa. Lumapit sa kanya si Yaya Anding at marang hinagod ang kanyang likod. I'm fine, Yaya. Ngilitian niyang matanda bilang pagbibigay ng assurance. Masayang-masayang ambiyan sa buong paligid. Puro nakangiti ang mukha ng bawat taong nakakasalubong ni Ava. Naroon sila ni Drake sa El Palacio, ang tanyag na mansan ng mga magulang ng asawa. Nakatayo ang mansan sa pinakaunang bayan ng San Marcelino na ang tawag ay Consolacion. Yun ang pinakamayama at pinakamulang na barangay sa buong San Marcelino o baka sa buong Pasambales. Sila ni Drake ay sa Castillo pa galing. Si Drake na lamang ang anak ng magkasawang Sullivan na nakatira sa Pilipinas. Ito ang bunso sa apat na magkakapatid. Ang lahat na kapatid ng asawa ay may asawa na at nasa ibang bansa, nakatira. Halos isang oras na sila nagbiyahe, isa ring maunlad na bahay ng Kastilyo. Hindi na nakapagtataka na may mga sinasabi rin sa lipunan ang mga nakatira doon. Ginanap ang mag-arabong pagdiriwang sa ingranding hardin ng El Palacio. Tiningala ni Ava ang manson. Ani mo hari iyon sa pagkakatindig? The mansion was a mixture of Spanish and American architecture. Tinatampo ka na isang napakalaking fountain ang gitna ng garden. Tila talagang pinaghanda ng okasyon. Nagpapatalbugan ang lahat ng bisita sa bihis at postura, mapababae o lalaki man. Of course, not everyone had the to be invited to that kind of gathering. Hindi na matandaan ni Ava kung sino-sino mga taong kanya nakakasalubong at bumati sa kanya. Her mind was focused solely on Drake's hand that tightly clasped her own. Ilang saglit ba'y magkakasama na silang lahat sa presidential table? Siya, si Drake, at ang kanya mga magulang, at sina Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan. Puro nice teas at business ang narinig sa usapan ni Ava ng kanya mga kasama sa mesa. Hindi pa rin binibitawan ni Drake ang kanyang kamay. Kahit hindi niya gusto ang mga ganong uri ng pagtitipon, hindi pa rin maiwasang matuwa ni Ava. She looked forward to that kind of occasion because it was the only time that Drake showed affection towards her. Kahit arte lamang yon labis pa rin siyang natutuwa. Mayamay ay tumayo ang mommy at daddy ni Drake. They stepped up to the makeshift stage as they held each other's hands. 
Kinuha ni Daddy Rod ang mikropono. Good evening everyone. Maraming salamat sa pagdalo ninyo ngayong gabi. Before I propose a toast, gusto ko muna magpahayag ng aking damdamin. Everybody knows that this occasion is a celebration of golden anniversary. To make him muna ito, kapag guay masuyong umiti sa esposa. Love was visible in his eyes. Happy anniversary. I love you so much, sweetheart. I'll never ever get tired of loving you. Mommy Lucy turned misty-eyed. She was misty-eyed too. The old couple kissed and hugged each other. Everybody made a toast to the couple. She also wanted that. She wanted that kind of love. Napatingin si Ava kay Jake na nakatingin din pala sa kanya. Mabilis na nag-iwas ang tingin ng asawa. Hope filled her heart. Maaari pa rin siguro maging maayos ang pagkasama nila. Napatingin si Ava kay Drake na bahagya siyang tapikin ng asawa sa braso. Baby, mom is talking to you. May kislap na pagbabanta sa mga mata ni Drake. Bumaling si Ava sa ina ni Drake at nahihiyang umiti sa ginang. Yes, mom? Puro ng pagsuyo ang iting ibinilek ni Mommy Lucy sa kanya. Wala pa bang inaasahan naming apo, iha? Nanunokso ang iti ng ginang. Nag-init ang mga piski ni Ava. Um, kasi po... Hindi niya na naituloy ang sinasabi dahil biglang sumingit ang daddy ni Drake. Ang hina mo naman, iho. Huwag mong sabihin bigo pa rin kami sa pangarap namin ha. Magkaroon ako po sa inyo hanggang ngayon. Tila naiilang na tumikim si Drake. Ngunit baga pa makapagsalita ang asawa, sumbat na ang kanyang papa. Ikaw naman, kumpadre. Huwag mo namang masyado i-pressure ang mga bata. Sigurado akong konting panahon na lang kailangan natin paggintay. Hindi mo ako masisisi, kumpadre. Hindi na tayo bumabata. Kalabaw lang ang tumatanda, kumpadre, sabi ng kanyang papa. Nagtawanan ng mga nasa mesa. Hindi na iwasan ni Ava na matawa rin. Napatingin siya kay Drake. Nakangiti ang asawa ngunit hindi umabot iyon sa mga mata. She would give anything just to see his smile back on his handsome face once again. It was priceless. Everything about him meant everything to her. Ava, you look thinner. Inaalagaan ka bang mabuti ng asawa mo? Talong ni Mommy Lucy kapag gawan. Oo nga naman, iha. Parang matamlay ka. Segunda ng kanyang mama. Napatingin si Ava kay Drake. Nakatingin din sa kanyang asawa. He was smiling but she knew very well what was behind that smile. A dangerous glint was visible in his eyes. Naramdaman niyang tinapakan ni Drake ng maren ang kanyang paa sa ilalim ng mesa, urging her to answer. Inaasahan na yun ni Ava. Mula pa noon, ganun ang ginagawa ng asawa sa bawat okasyon na may nagtatanong tungkol sa estado ng pagsasama nila. Inaalagaan po ako mabuti ni Drake. I couldn't be happier. It's him that I love and would love for the rest of my life. Wala na po akong mahihiling pa. It came out as a whisper. Natahimik ang mga kasama nila sa mesa. Mukhang kontento naman ng mga ito sa kanyang naging sagot. Palihim na tinignan niya si Drake. Walang mabasang ekspresyon si Ava sa mukha ng asawa. Inalis na ni Drake ang paa sa ibabaw ng kanyang lamesa. Bahagyang sumakit ang paa ni Ava sa sobrang din ang pagkakatapak doon ni Drake. Ang totoo, hindi naman nito kailangan gawin pa yon. She would still say those words over and over. Hindi dahil yun ang nararapat, kundi dahil yun ang totoo. Yun ang nararamdaman ni Ava. Magkasama si na Ava at Drake sa buong durasyon ng party. Kahit minsan hindi umalas sa tabi niya ang kanyang asawa. At gustong gusto naman yun ni Ava. Sa ganong pagkakataon lamang niya nahahawakan, nayayakap at nahahalikan si Drake. Sinusulit ang bawat sandali ng mga ganoong pagkakataon. For him, the occasion was just an avenue for her to showcase her excellent acting skills. But for her, this was the only time where she could show him how she truly felt about him. Tulad ng dati, napapansin ni Ava na sadyang nagpapakalasing ang asawa na hindi nahahalata ni Noman maliban sa kanya. Maging ang simple yung pagalaw ng mga mata ni Drake ay napapansin ni Ava. Nothing about him went past her. Maaari lamang hawakan niya ang kamay ng orasan para tumigil yun sa pagtakbo. She wished she could hold his hands forever. She wished she could stay by his side for eternity. Marami ang lumalapit at bumabati sa kanila. Karamihan ay kaibigan at family friend ni Drake. Ang ilan na may business associates. He gladly introduced her to them. It was all just part of the act. Of course, she felt a bit cold na mapag-isa ulit sila. At mangyayakapin ni Ava ang asawa na lumapit sa kanila ang mga ina nila. Ava, come with us. Anang kanyang mama. We want to introduce you to some of our new friends. Nakangiting dagdag ni Mommy Lucy. Gusto ko ipagmalaki sa kanila maganda kong manugang. Bumaling si Ava kay Drake. Nagbabanta ang tingin na asawa pero ngumiti at sinabing, Sure baby, don't worry about me. 
He gave her a quick smack on the lips. Nagkatigitigan sila sa isa't isa. Tulala pa rin si Ava habang nakabrichete sa magkabi ng braso ang kanyang mama at mommy. She was introduced to several women. Karamihan ka edad mas matanda pa sa dalawang ginang. Pagkalipas ng ilang minuto, nagpaalam si Ava saglit sa dalawang ginang. Ang totoo, hahanapin niya si Drake. Marahil nagpapakanunod na sa alak ang asawa. Palingaling nga si sa paligid na may magsalita sa kanyang likuran. Looking for your husband? She took her time in facing him. Kinala ni Ava ang boses na iyon kahit tinitingnan na may ari ng boses. It was Sean Velmonte. Kababata niya ang binata at may tuturing na pinakamatalik na kaibigan. Have you seen him? Talong ni Ava. She managed to look into his eyes. Saw him a while ago, drinking himself to death. Masuyong hinagod sa lantingin ni Sean. You are as beautiful as ever, even though you look pale. She couldn't find the right words to say. How are you? He smiled broadly and devastatingly devilish smile na kinababaliwan ng lahat ng mga babae. No woman ever survived his smile except her. Katulad ngumiti ka pa rin ng dati. Ano ito? Napayo ko si Ava sa tinuro ng binata. Na mag-angat ulit siya ng tingin, she had a genuine smile for him. You look good. Muli, ngumisi si Sean. Yeah, but that's not enough for you. She felt uneasy. Sean? I know, I know. Tumatawang putol sa kanya ng binata. I'm just kidding. Inilahad nito ang kamay sa kanya. Come on, let's dance. Nag-aatabiling tinitigan ni Ava ang nakalahad na kamay ni Sean. Hindi yun ang unang bes na mahahawakan niya ang kamay ng binata. They had been friends for the longest time. Magsasayaw lang tayo, please. For all time's sake. Nakikiusap ang tingin ni Sean. She put her hand on his. Tila nakaramdam ng kapanatagan si Ava na maglapat ang mga kamay nila. It had been years since they last held each other's hands like that. She felt a familiar calmness. Ang init ang dulot ng kamay ni Sean ay tila balsamo na maaplos sa kanyang buong pagkatao. Para na niyang kapatid ang binata. Well, on her part, yun ang nararamdaman ni Ava. Wala siyang ibang pinagkakatiwalaan gaya ng pagtitiwala niya kay Sean. Sa halip na pumunta sa dance floor, na natili naman sila nakatayuroon habang magkakahawa kamay. You can tell me about it, Ava. Ano siyan kapag guwan? She saw fondness in his beautiful brown eyes. Ava ang palayo ni Sean sa kanya. Walang ibang tumatawag sa niya ng ganoon kundi ito lamang. She was about to speak when she heard Drake's voice. Ava! Gulat na binawi niya ang kanyang kamay at agad lumingon kay Drake. She saw fire in his eyes. Hindi rin niya alam kung paano nalapit sa asawa. So leave on. Usal ni Sean. Naglakad palapit sa kanila ang kanyang asawa. Vilmonte. Nagsukatan ang tingin ng dalawang lalaki. Walang sino mang nag-iwas ang tingin. Hindi naman malaman ni Ava kung paano magre-react na hindi nakakakuha ng atensyon. Drake, we were just... I'm not asking for your explanation, Ava. Hindi tumitingin sa kanyang wika ng asawa. You have a nice, sweet way of talking to your wife, Sullivan. Nariningkit ang mga matang sabi ni Sean. Wala kang pakialam kung paano ko kakausapin ang asawa ko. Kitang-kita sa mukha ni Drake ang labis sa pagbipigil ng galit. At tamang sinabi mo, Vilmonte. Wife, my wife. Might as well get your own wife para hindi kita nakikiapid pa sa asawa na may asawa. Napasinghap si Ava sa direktang akusasyong pinakawalan ni Drake. Nagpalipat-lipat ang tingin niya sa dalawang lalaki. Kapag kwan lumingas siya sa paligid. Nakahinga ng maluwag si Ava na makitang hindi naman sila nakakuha ng atensyon. It seemed like everybody was minding their own business. Magsasalita sana si Ava pero naunahan siya ni Sean. Oh, don't be jealous, Sullivan. Ava and I were just catching up for all time's sake. Nang uuyam ang iting pinakawala ng binata. Tila tuwang tuwa ito sa nakikitang pagtatagis na mga bagang ng kanyang asawa. We have a great pass after all. Hindi naman siguro masama kung mag-uusap kami. Literal na nagpigil ni Ava ang hininga habang hinihintay ang sagot ni Drake. Well then, I hope you had a great time catching up. Her husband said coldly. Yeah, absolutely. Ano siya? Na hindi pa rin nawawala nakakalokong iti sa mga labi. Kahit kailan talaga walang pinangingilaga ng binata. Sean always had a teasing personality. Good, Anne Drake. Hindi lang tinig ng asawa ang kasinlamig ng yelo, kundi maging ang mga mata. I'm afraid you have to continue catching up some other time. Kailangan na naming umuwi. Agad hinawakan siya ni Drake sa palapulsuhan at inila palabas ng El Palacio. Isang nagpapaumanhing tingin ang iniwan ni Ava kay Sean. Hindi ba tayo magpapaalam, Drake? Lakas na ob na tanong ni Ava. I already have. Hindi mo lang napansin nil masyado kabala sa pakikipag-flirt kay Vilmonte. Padasko na pinasok siya ng asawa sa loob ng kotse bago ito lumigid sa driver's seat. 
Sean and I are just friends. Drake, wala namang... I don't care. Nag-aalab ang mga bata ni Drake nang tumingin sa kanya. Pinasil nito ang kanyang magkabilang balikat. Naamoy ni Ava ang alak sa hininga ng asawa. Tila rin siya malalasing nang bigla siyang gagawin ni Drake sa mga balikat. How dare you do this to us? Hindi ka na nahiya sa mommy at daddy. Tila madudurog ang kanyang mga buto sa braso at mga balikat sa higpit ng pagkakahawak ni Drake. And you're doing this within my sight. Alam mong wala kaming ginagawang masama ni Sean. Nag-uusap lang kami. Pangangatwiran ni Ava, kahit alam niyang hindi magandang ideya yun. He never accepted any explanation from her. Talking while holding hands? O Miss Mincy Drake? Not that I care, but you know it's my name you're destroying. Nakikita ni Ava sa mga mata ng asawa ang labis sa pagkamuhi sa kanya. Yun ang dahilan kung bakit madalas ay hindi niya magawang tumingin ng diretso sa mga mata ni Drake. Ayaw niyang makita sa mga iyon ang katotohanan. Sa kabila ng tatlong taong pagsasilbi ni Ava sa asawa, wala pa rin itong nadarama ni katiting na pagmamahal para sa kanya. Parang dinudulog ang kanyang puso sa napakasakit na katotohanan. The big problem was, she still had to look into his eyes as if her very little life defended on it. Kay Drake nakadepende ang kanyang buong buhay, ang kanyang buong pagkatao. She existed because of him. Binitawan na siya ni Drake na masa ang mga pisngi ni Ava. Umiiyak na pala siya nang hindi na mamalayan. He murmured something na hindi nagaano na intindihan ni Ava. Muli, tila guni-guning nakikita na naman niya ang tila remorse sa mga mata ni Drake. Ngulit agad niyong nawala. It must be her imagination. Dalidaling pinahid ni Ava ang kanyang mga luha. Si Drake naman pinaharulot ng kotse at hindi na nagsalita sa buong biyahe. She felt cold and empty. Hindi niya maiwasang magbalik tanaw sa nakaraan. Sa totoong dahilan ng pagkamuhi ni Drake sa kanya. Umurong ka na sa kasal. Sabihin mo ay mo magpakasal sa akin dahil hindi mo ako mahal. Yun naman ang totoo, di ba? Puro ng pagsusumama ang mga mata sa tinig ni Drake habang nakikipag-usap sa kanya. Napalunok si Ava bago sumagot. Hindi ko kayang sabay ng parents ko, Drake. Ang totoo, sadyang nangibabaw ang kanyang pag-ibig sa binata at ang kagustuhang maikasal sila. That's bullshit. Puro ng galit at frustration ang anyo ni Drake. You don't love me. I don't love you. What's the use of this marriage? May sakit na bumalatay sa dibdib ni Ava. Gusto niya magprotesa sa mga sinabi ni Drake, ngunit alam niyang nalalaman niya ito ay kagagalit. Alam mong may fiancay na ako, si Savannah. Hindi alam ni Ava kung saan siya kumuha ng tapang upang sagutan na tingnan ng diretsa sa mga matang binata. I cannot defy my parents. I cannot let them down. Gaya mo na nagmamahal, mahal ko rin sila. Can you let your parents down? Nakapagsukatan sa kanya ng tingin si Drake. Puro ng puot at pagkamuhi ang mga mata. I am not marrying you. Matigas sa sabi nito bago iniwan si Ava. He did everything to stop the wedding. Pero hindi nagtagumpay si Drake dahil ang mga magulang pa rin ito ang nasunod kaya naikasal sila. Nilunod ni Drake ang sarili sa alcohol sa mga unang linggo na ang pagsasama nila. Lalong lumala iyon ang mabalitaan nitong namatay ang ex-girlfriend nitong si Savannah sa isang car accident. Ang kumakalat na balita nag-suicide na ang babae dahil sa pagpapakasal ni Drake sa kanya. He was devastated because of what happened. Alam ni Ava, siya ang sinisisi ni Drake sa nangyari sa pinakamamahal na nobya. Dahil doon palagi itong umuwi na gumagapang sa kalasingan. Ngunit may lakas pa rin itong sumbatan at saktan siya. The first months of their marriage were held, just as he promised. Lala na sa mga panahong hindi nito kayang kontrolin ang labis sa galit. Isang alas na sa madaling araw, umuwi si Drake lasing na lasing. Sinalubong ni Ava ang asawa sa pintuan. Drake! Tinangka niya itong hawakan ngunit tinabig nito ang kanyang kamay. My dear wife, you don't need to act like a good caring wife. Nobody's watching. Slurred na sabi ni Drake. Pasuray na lumaka nito at tila matutumba kaya pilit nilalohan niya ang asawa. Pero dahil higit na malaki at mabigat ito kaysa kanya, hindi rin kinaya ni Ava na unalign si Drake. Sabay silang bumagsak sa carpet. Halos mapaigik siya sa tindi ng bigat ng asawa. Nasa ilalim siya at kahit anong tulak ang kanyang gawin, hindi tumitinag si Drake. Suddenly, she felt him kissing her neck. Tinulak niya ang asawa ngunit hindi pa rin ito natinag. Drake, please! Please what? Sinabunutan siya ni Drake kapag mapatingin si Ava sa asawa. You are my wife. I have every right. Maraing hinagkan sa nito sa mga labi. It was a kiss meant to punish. It had no gentleness in it. Maya-maya pa, nalalasahan na ni Ava ang sariling dugo sa kanya mga labi. Drake, maawa ka. Bumukal ang mga luha sa kanya mga mata. O Miss Mid si Drake. You're really a good actress. That's no use to me. I bought you... 
No, my parents bought you for me. Dahil mukha kang pera. You want my money, right? Well, now you've got it. Hindi yun totoo, Drake. Her tears started to fall. Tumigas ang anyo ni Drake. Mukha kang pera. You are a first-class gold digger, Ava. At pasibazib na hinalikan siya ng asawa sa mga labi. She used all her might and force to push away. Tila hindi idaasa ni Drake ang ginawa niyang pagtulak sa kanya. Kaya na-outbalance ang asawa. She hurriedly stood up. Ang tangkay tumakbo papanhek sa kwarto nila. Ngunit hindi pa nakadadalawang hakbang si Ava, hinila siya ni Drake sa paa. She fell down on the carpet. Impit na napasigaw si Ava nang pulitin ni Drake ang kanyang pansama top. Drake, no! Please! Ngunit tila ito bingi sa kanyang pakiusap. Sunod na pinunit ng asawa ang kanyang pajama bottom. Pilit na nagwala at nanlaban si Ava. Sumisipa, nangangalmot. Ngunit sadyang malakas si Drake. Sa huli, nawalan siya ng lakas na manlaban. This is what you want, so why fight it? He took off his own clothes. He started to explore her body. After a while, he was trusting dominantly above her. Her tears fell down her cheeks. Nakakalokong umiti pa si Drake na makita ang kanyang pagluha. You really are a good actress. Why don't you fake a sob as well? He continued to thrust inside her until he reached his climax. After a while, he stood up and left her. Gaya ng mga naunang pagtatarik nila, wala rin kahalong pagmamahal o emosyon ang kakatapos ng nanamagitan sa kanila. Her tears continued to fall. Inihimpel na Drake ang sasakyan sa harap ng bahay nila. Bumaling siya kay Abad na kita nakapikit ang asawa. Nakatulog pala ito sa biyahe. Napakunot noo si Drake na makitang may buti ng duhang pumatak mula sa kaliwang mata ni Ava. Crying in her sleep? Why? He suddenly felt guilty. Tila may sariling pag-iisip ang kanyang kamay dahil dandang ang mga tiyon at pinahid ang duha ng asawa. He also could not help but touch her soft face. Hindi na nagawang ilayo ni Drake ang paningin kay Ava. She looked enchanting and vulnerable in her sleep. Like a baby that needed to be taken care of. A strange emotion suddenly enveloped him. Well... This was not really strange to him. He had felt this way for her in the past. What was she dreaming about? Was she having a nightmare? Was that why she was crying? Wait, why did he even care? Tila na pasong binawi ni Drake ang kanyang kamay. He was supposed to be angry at her. He couldn't just turn soft-hearted because of her fragile looks. Mapanlin lang ang mukha ni Abba. She was a skimming gold digger. Why didn't she refuse to arrange marriage? She even looked like she willingly agreed to their parents' plans. Ano pa ba ang iba magiging dahilan ng pagpayag ni Ava kung hindi ang pera ng kanyang pamilya? Oo nga, hindi naman ito mahirap, ngunit higit na mayaman at makapangyarihan ng pamilya nila. Ngunit tuwing tinitingnan ni Drake ang mga mata ni Ava, tila yung nagbabad siya ng iba pang dahilan. Kung ano man yun, ayaw na niyang alamin. Ipinilig ni Drake ang kanyang ulo para palipasin ang ibang bagay na nais pumasok sa kanyang isip. Focus, Drake. Focus. Do not be fooled by her. Binuksan niya ang pinto ng kotse at tumibis. Sinadya niyang pabalang isarang pinto pa magising si Ava. Naalimpungatan si Ava na maramdaman niya ang malakas na pagsara sa pinto ng kotse. Dumilat sa nakita si Drake na papasok na sa loob ng bahay nila. Her cheeks were wet with tears. Agad pinahid niya ang kanyang mga luha at sumulod sa kanyang asawa. Alas 4 na madaling araw kaya siguradong tulog pa mga kasambahay. Narinig niyang may bahagyang ingay na nagmumula sa bar. Nagtungo siya roon. Gaya ng kanyang inaasahan, naroon si Drake at nagpapakalunod sa alak. Nagkasya na lamang si Ava sa pagmamasid sa asawa. He looked like a total mess. Nakasubsob ang mukha ni Drake sa counter. Wala rin sa tamang lugar ang nectay nito. Gayon din ang suit. His untamed hair even looked messier. Her heart went out to him. It always did. Hindi napigilan ni Ava ang kanyang sarili at nilapitan si Drake. She could see half of his face. He looked so peaceful and serene. He was so near yet so far. Gustong gusto niyang haprosin ang mukha ni Drake ngunit nag-aalala siyang baka magising ang asawa. Hindi alam ni Ava kung gano'n niya katagal tinititigan si Drake. As if in a trance, she raised her hand to touch him. But he suddenly woke up. Nahigit niya ang kanyang hininga at binaba ang kanyang kamay sa tagiliran. She swallowed the lump on her throat. Matamang tinitigan siya ni Drake. As usual, there was hate in his eyes. Napamulat si Ava ng hawakan siya ng asawa sa baba at parasahang patingalain dito. I'm glad. Tama yan. Matakot ka. That's the least you can do for trapping me into this marriage. Pagkatapos, tinulak siya ni Drake at pasuray-suray na naglakad palayo. Stupid as it seemed, nagmamadaling sununda ni Ava ang asawa. Nag-aalala siya na baka mahulog ito sa hagdan. Drake! 
Napatakbo si Ava sa asawa upang dalhan ito na makitang tamang ang kanyang hinala. She used all her strength to carry him upstairs to their bedroom. Akmang inihigana niya sa kama si Drake na bigla siyang ilahin. She fell on top of him. She looked into his eyes and saw fire in them. But it was not the kind of fire she usually saw in his eyes. It was something like hunger. Kinabig siya ni Drake sa bato. Hinalikan siya sa mga labi. She froze. It was the first time he kissed her without any trace of violence or urgency. She could not react properly because of the shattering kiss. He kissed her passionately, coaxing her to respond. Ganun nga ang kanyang ginawa. Slowly, hesitantly, she answered his kisses. She felt his hands all over her. They were both fully clothed but she felt like she was burning. She could feel his intense heat. His hands were on her breast, caressing them softly. They shifted positions after a while. She was now under him. Hindi na halos na ni Ava na nagawa ng tanggalin ni Drake ang suot niyang gown. Meanwhile, her hands frantically unbuttoned his top. She continued to undress him as he explored her body. He buried his face against her chest and kissed each peak. Ibinaba ni Drake hanggang sa kanyang bewang ang kanyang gown habang nagawa naman niyang hubara ng asawa. She had never felt that kind of hunger before. Noon lamang nangyari ang ganoon sa kanya. In their three years of marriage, he had never made love to her like this. Tears fell down her face when she reached her climax. Alam ni Ava na sabay nilang narating ang walang kahulilip na kaligayahan. Nakawanan si Drake sa kanyang dibdib. It was a dream came true for her. Her tears were falling but she was also smiling. Now she believed that love really made people go crazy. She felt him move and murmur something. Huwigpit din ang pagkakayakap ni Drake sa kanya. Hinagod-hagod ni Ava ang buhok ng asawa nang matigilan siya. Savanna, Vanna, umuung walang sambit ni Drake. I'm sorry, Vanna. She cried even harder. Tila nabingyan si Ava sa mga narinig. He thought that the woman he made love to was Savanna. Bubangon si Ava. She could not control the sobs. Binalat niya ang kanyang katawan ng kumot. Her hopes were crushed. Her dreams shattered. Tila siya boteng nabasag na dinurog pa ng pino pagkatapos. Muling binanggit ng paulit-ulit ni Drake ang pangalan ng dating kasintahan. Hindi na iyon nakayanan pa ni Ava. Tumakbo siya palabas sa veranda. Sumubsob sa couch doon at umiyak ng umiyak. Loving Drake was really painful. Sa loob na napakahabang panahon, walang ibang minahal si Ava kundi si Drake lamang. Kasalanan ba niya kung umibig siya rito? Marahil isang kasalanan nga iyon. Kasalanan ni Ava dali niyaan niyang sarili na mahulog kay Drake. Since she met him, she lost her identity. His existence became her existence. It was not his fault. It was hers. Ipinagpilitan niyang kanyang sarili kay Drake. She did not accept the fact that some things were not meant to be. The two of them were not meant to be, but she defied fate. Tama lang yun sa kanya. She deserved it. She looked up at the sky. Halos hindi maaninag ni Ava ang mga bituin dahil nalam sa luha ang kanyang mga mata. Nagising si Drake sa silo ng liwanag. Pagmurat ng mga mata nakita niyang bukas ang veranda. The sunlight filtered past the open door. Nasa po ni Drake ang kanyang ulo na biglang kumirot iyon. Akmang babaon siya sa kama na mapansing wala siyang suot na kahit ano. Tumayo si Drake at naghalungkat ng damit sa closet. Nang makakita ng boxer short agad niyang sinuot iyon. Then, he slowly walked towards the veranda. Dinediretso siya sa barandili at kumapit doon. He closed his eyes and felt the mixture of heat and cold. Lamig na dudot ng hangin at init na hatid ng sikat ng araw. It had been so long since he had the chance to do this, ever since he got married. Nahaluan ng baag yung anita siya ng vehemence na nararamdaman ni Drake. Nagiba siya ng posisyon at sumandal sa barantilya. Natigilan siya sa nakita. Ava lay on a wooden couch. Mukhang himbing na himbing sa pagtulog ang asawa. Napakalot noon si Drake na ang itsura ni Ava. A bed sheet was wrapped around her body. He doubted whether she wore anything underneath. Did something happen between them last night? As if in a trance, he walked towards her. Tumalungko siya sa harap ng asawa. She looked so peaceful and so serene in her sleep. Hindi napigilan ni Drake ang kanyang sarili at hinawin niya ilang strand ng buhok na niligaw sa magandang mukha ni Ava. She possessed the most innocent face he had ever seen in his whole life. Her lips were as red as the petals of a rose. 
hindi niya maiwasan maalala nung unang beses na nakita niya si Ava. She was in the middle of a gathering. With her understanding looks, it was impossible for him not to notice her. The first time their eyes met, he felt something awkward. Si Ava ang naunang nagbaba ng tingin. Hindi na ulit nakita ni Drake ang babae ng gabing yun. Nagbigay yun sa kanya ng bahagyang pangihinayang. At their next meeting, he got the chance to kiss her hand. He had that awkward feeling again. He was sure it was not attraction he felt because he had Savannah at that time. Hindi rin alam ni Jake kung bakit hindi niya nakalimutan ang pangyayaring yun. They were introduced to each other by his parents. He was so surprised to see her but he managed not to show his feelings. Nice to meet you, Senorita Ava. He took her hand and kissed it. He felt so awkward again. This time talagang ayaw niyang limiin kung ano yun. Biglang hindi na ni Ava ang kamay nito sa labis sa pagtataka ni Drake. Tila may bahagi ng pagkatao niya ang nais tumutol. Pero nakatingin ng masama si Savannah kay Ava kaya nagkibit balikat na lamang siya. He took his girlfriend's hand instead. Nang mag-angat sa natingin kay Ava, may nabanaag si Drake na kakaibang emosyon sa mga mata ng dalaga. Something like hurt? Bago pa niya matiya kung ano iyon, inakay na si Ava ng mama nito at ng mommy niya papalayo. Nagkasya na lamang si Drake sa pagtanaw habang papalayo ang dalaga. Nahiling niyang sanay lumingon si Ava. Ngunit bago pa yun mangyari, kinabig si Drake ng kanyang kasintahan at maring hinagkan sa mga labi. Hinaplos si Drake ang bahok ni Ava. Lahat ng bahagi ng mukha at gali ng asawa nagsusumigaw ng kainosentehan. Agad nang binawi niya ang kanyang kamay. She was far from being innocent. Her beautiful and innocent face was very deceptive. Bahagyang gumalaw si Ava dahilan para bumaba ang tapi nitong kumot, exposing part of her bare breasts. Galit, frustration, desire. Sabay-sabay na ni Drake ang mga yon. Sa kabila ng galit, dili niya napigil ang sariling katawan. The desire he felt for her was so overpowering. Tulad na lang na naramdaman niya ngayon, the desire to kiss her was almost painful. She moved again. This time talagang buwaba na ng hustong kumot na nakatapi kay Ava, exposing her whole breast. He groaned inwardly. Inawakan ni Drake ang kumot upang itaas iyon. Sa bahaging iyon, ito nagmulat ang mga mata. Agad binitawa niya ang kumot. Daklot ang kumot, sumiksik sa dulo ng couch si Ava. Isa pa iyon sa labis na kinagagalit ni Drake. Palaging punong-puno ng kalituhan ang mga mata ni Altea at tila hindi nito malaman kung ano ang sasabihin. Tila namamaga rin ang mata ng asawa. Did she cry last night? Why in the hell did he care about it anyway? Wala siyang pakialam kung umiyak man to na isang drum. Heck, he could not get all soft-hearted with this woman. Not now, not ever. Don't you know what time it is? Pinabagsik na Jake ang tinig sa kanyang mukha. Tila hindi makaapuhap ng sasabihin si Ava. Oras na para maghanda ka ng almusal. Oras na para gawin mo mga dapat mong gawin. Pasingal na sabi ni Jake kapag mapagtakpan ang mga damdaming bumangon sa kanyang puso. Tila natauhang napatayo si Ava. Halos tumipad ang asawa papasok sa labang kwarto. Naiwan si Jake na natitigilan. Two months later, napakapit ng marain si Ava sa balustre ng hagdan. Nahihilo siya tila hinahalo kayang kanyang sikmura. Binitawan ni Ava ang hawak na pamunas at tumakbo patungo sa banyo. Muntik pa niyang mabunggo si Yaya Andeng na papasok naman sa sala. Paluhod na sumubsob si Ava sa toilet bowl at doon nagduduwal. Kapi lamang kanyang inalmosal kaya hirap na hirap siyang sumuka. Maasim ang kanyang panlasa. Ilang saglit din siya nakalupasay sa tile floor bago dahan-dahang tumayo. Lumapit sa lababo si Ava at nagmumog at naghilamos. Kapag guan, kumuha siya ng tawal at nagpunas ang muka. Paglabas ng banyo, nasa lubong niya si Yaya Andeng. Ano nangyari Ava? Tanong ng matandang babae. Nahilo po ako, Yaya. Sagot ni Ava. Ayos ka na ba? Sinalat ni Yaya ang ang kanyang noo. Naduwal po ako. Hindi ko nga po alam kung bakit bigla na lang ako nakaramdam ng pagkahilo at pagkaduwal. Saglit na napaisip ang matanda. Ano bang kinain mo? Umiling siya. Uminom lamang po ako ng isang tasang kape. Nahilo at nagduwal ka ng ganito kaaga? Tumikhem si Yaya ang deng at tumingin ang diretsyo sa kanya. Dumating na ba ang buwan ng dalaw mo, iha? She froze. Come to think of it, she did not have her period that month. In fact, her period was two weeks late. Could it be possible that she... Happiness began to fill her heart. Kung totoo nga nagdadalang tao siya, isa yung napahagandang balita. She went to the sala and picked up her phone. She was going to call her mother. Malayo pang sasakyan ni Drake, tanaw na niya mga sasakyan na nakaparada sa labas ng bahay nila. Inimpal niya ang kanyang black Subaru sa likod ng Grey Hammer H2 ng kanyang mga magulang. Pagkaibay sa sasakyan, tuloy-tuloy na pumasok si Drake sa loob ng bahay. 
Agad na sinalubong siya ng kanyang ina. Napakulot na ako si Drake. What was her mother doing in this house? Gabing gabi na, lalo siyang naguluhan na makita rin sa salang kanyang daddy, maging ang ama at ang papa ni Ava. May problema ba? He asked, addressing no one in particular. Nakayo ko si Ava. Tila sinasadyang huwag siyang tignan. Nilapitan si Drake ng kanyang mama at bahigpit na hinawakan ng kanyang mga kamay. Iho, tila sadyang ibiniti nito ang kung anumang dapat sabihin sa kanya. Mom, Dad, I don't understand. Your wife is pregnant. His wife, Mom said, cutting him off. He froze as realization dawned upon na napatingin si Drake kay Ava. Nakatayin din to sa kanya. Her eyes full of worry. You have maybe the happiest old man in the world, son? Anang papa ni Ava. Tumayo ito at niyakap si Drake. Huwag mo namang saluhin ng kasiyahan kong padre. Kami rin ay maligayang maligaya. Ani ng kanyang ama. Congratulations, iho. Bati naman ng mama ni Ava. Tulala pa rin si Drake at di makahuma sa mga nangyayari. Kahit nangilayan sa ng kanyang mama papunta sa komedor, hindi pa rin niya alam kung paano magre-react. Everybody was so happy and excited and he couldn't do anything but go with the flow. Maraming pagkain na nakanda sa mesa. Magkatabi sila ni Ava ngunit hindi sila nag-uusap. Tila naman hindi yun napansin ng mga magulang nila na abalang-abala sa pag-uusap. Pagkatapos kumain, ay lumapit sila sa entertainment room. Napagpa siya ng mga magulang nilang sa bahay na magpalipas ng gabi. That only meant he could not sleep in the library tonight. Nauna lang nagpaalam si Ava na aakyat sa kanilang silid. Agad na pinayagan naman na Drake ito dahil sa kalagayan. Bawal daw mapuyat ang mga buntis. Maya-maya pa, pumanik na rin ang kanyang mga magulang at in-laws. Ilang saglit pa'y napagpa siya na rin niyang umakyat. He slowly opened the door of the master's bedroom. Pagpasok, nakita ni Drake na nakahiga sa kama si Ava. Nakatagil ng asawa sa pinto kaya hindi nito nakita ang kanyang pagpasok. Nakakumot ito hanggang leeg. Tulog na marahil ang asawa. He still did not know what to say. Hindi alam na Drake ano ba dapat na kaya maging reaksyon sa kalamang magiging tatay na siya. He was going to have a child with his unwanted wife. Gayunman, nakaramdam ng kaligayan si Drake sa kalamang magiging tatay na siya. He could not believe that it would be possible to be happy and confused at the same time. Ngayong may anak na sila, makatwilan pa bang kamuhian niya si Ava? Litong nito si Drake. Nagpalit siya ng damit panligo at bitbit ang towel, nagtungo sa swimming pool. Nagdive siya sa tubig at pabalik-balik na lumangoy. He tried so hard to tire himself out but to no avail. Nang umahon sa tubig, malabo pa rin ang kanyang pag-iisip. Ayaw niyang i-assess ang kanyang mga nararamdaman dahil natatakot siya sa maaaring matuklasan. Nagpuna si Drake ng katawan at maling bumalik sa lab ng kabahayan. Natigilan siya na makita ang kanyang mommy na nakaupo sa may sala. Hindi ka makatulog? Tanong nito sa kanya. Marami lang ako iniisip, ma'am. Useless na magsinulang si Drake sa ina. Si Ava ba? Hindi niya alam kung paano sasagutin ang tanong ng ina. He remained silent and sat on the carpeted floor. Natutuwa talaga ako, iho. Magkakanak na ni Ava. His mother sighed. Alam ko, hindi ba magawang tanggapin sa sarili mo si Ava bilang asawa? Alam ko rin, galit ka sa ginawa naming pagbili sa'yo ng daddy mo na pakasalan siya. Ma'am, let's not talk about it. He wanted to avoid the topic. We have to talk about this, once and for all. Marami kaming dahilang sinabi sa'yo ng daddy mo. We threatened to incinerate you. We told you you were doing to lose your house na matagal mo ng pinapangarap. We even threatened to ruin the life of, of your ex-girlfriend. Marahas na umiling sa Drake. Mommy, please, ayoko magalit kay sa akin. Ayoko pag-usapan na nakarana o kahit anumang may kinalaman kay Vanna. She is already dead, so it's no use. Pigil na pigil niya ang pagalpas ng galit. You have to hear it. Hindi niya kaya pasubalian ang pakiusap sa mga mata ng ina. He loved her so much, he could not hurt her. Gustong magsalita ni Jake, kunit niya alam ko anong sasabihin. Walang kanalaman si Ava sa nangyaring kasalan. Kami ng daddy mo at ng mga magulang ni Ava ang nagplano ng lahat. She looked straight into his eyes. Ayoko na sanang sabihin pa ito sa iyo, but you have to know the truth. Oo, at lasing si Savannah na mamatay siya sa car accident. Lasing siya, pero hindi dahil nagluluk sa siya sa ginawa mong pagpapakasal sa ibang babae. Lasing siya dahil nagdiwang siya sa tagumpay na annulment case ng lover niya. His face grew pale. Mom, if you're telling this just to... Her lover was Rolando Santiago. Tila bombang sumabog iyon sa harap ni Drake. His uncle Rolando was Savannah's lover? 
He shook his head in disbelief. Yes, son, Rolando was your father's third cousin. He was with Savannah in that accident. Pinalabas naman ang pamilya niya na wala ng prenong sasakyan. Pero ang totoo, pareho silang lasing-lasing. Hindi nakalabas ang balitang to dahil sa lusunan ng pera ang anumang maaaring lamabas sa balita. Malalaman mo kung nagsisinungaling ako? Inawa ka ng ina ang kamay ni Drake. She was having a relationship with Rolando while she was still with you. Matagal na naming alam ng papa mo kung nuuri ng pagkataong meron siya. Nakita namin seryoso ka sa kanya kaya nagdesisyon kami ng ipakasal ka kay Ava. Kahit alam namin ng papa mo na ayaw mo nang dinidigtahan, ipinilit pa rin namin sa iyong pagpapakasal kay Ava at hindi yun dahil sa merging ng mga negosyo ng pamilya natin. I chose her for you, not just because she is beautiful, rich and educated, but because she also loves you. He stopped breathing. Did he heard it right? Unang kita ko pa lang kay Ava, alam ko nang mabuti siyang babae. Kung bibigyan mo lamang sana siya ng pagkakataon na sarili mo na kinalanin siya, sigurado magugustuhan mo siya. Walang dudang matututuhan mo siyang mahalin. His mother paused and smiled na tila may may naalala na kakatawa. She loves you. Maswerte ka at siyang asawa mo. Ava slowly opened her eyes. Pumapasok ang sikat ng araw sa pinto ng veranda. Tiringnan niya ang alarm clock sa bedside table. It was already 6 in the morning. Bumaling siya sa kanyang kaliwa at nakita na tutulog pa si Drake. Mahigit apat na balang dinadala ni Ava sa kanyang sinapupunan. Wala nang magbuntis, nagkaroon na ng bahagyang magbabago sa pagkasama nila mag-asawa. Medyo nagmelow si Drake. He treated her way better than before. Hindi na siya sinisinghala na pinagsasalita ng masasakit ng asawa. Hindi na rin siya inutusan ng kung ano-ano. Pero yun ay dahil bibihira na lang siyang kausapin ni Drake. Minsan naisip niyang mas mabuti pang dati. Kahit palagi itong galit, kinakausap naman siya ng asawa. Gayon man, labis na natutuwa si Ava dahil di niya na nakikita pa ang pagkamuhi sa mga mata ni Break. Yes, there was still no emotion but at least the hate was gone. At para sa kanya, magandang sanyales na iyon. Bumango na si Ava at nagsimulang ihanda ang mga gagamitin ng asawa sa pagpasok sa opisina. Drake worked as the head engineer of the construction firm. That was owned by his father. Pagkatapos hinda ang mga isusot ni Drake, bumaba na siya ang pangasikasoy ng agahan. Pag dinat ni Drake agad lumapit ang tingin ng asawa sa kanyang kanan. Wala na si Ava sa kanyang tabi. Mabilis na bumangon siya at nagtigilan na makita na kasabit ang dami na kanya isusot. Planchadong planchado. Bagay ang sapatos, medyas at underwear ay nakanda na rin. Walang dudang pagpasok niya sa banyo ay handa na rin ang tub. Umupo si Drake sa kama. Ganun na si Ava noon pa man. Hindi lang niya pansin dalabala siya sa pag-iisip kung paano sasaktan ang damdamin ng asawa, kung paano pahihirapan at kung paano gagantihan sa kasalanan na hindi man pala nito ginawa. While he was busy making her life a living hell, she was busy taking care of him. Pampering him and attending to him. He suddenly had a lump on his throat. Pumasok ko siya sa loob ng banyo at naligo. Pagkabihas sa ganda mawaba si Drake. Natigilan siya sa pintuan ng kusina nang may marinig siya nagtatawanan. Kabilang na sa mga iyon si Ava. Her laughter was like music to his ears. Saglit na nakinig siya sa pinag-uusapan ng mga naroon. Kausap ni Ava ang mga kasambahin nila. Ala, talaga namang kasarap ni Ray ma'am. Kasawal ta talaga ni Sir eh. Animang Ludring. Ang kanilang hardinero. Tumawa ulit si Ava. Mang Lodring, kahit naman po hindi niyo sabihin yan, pakakainin ko pa rin po kayo ng luto ko. Ay oo nga naman, Mang Lodring. Kayo talaga pa sa pagkain? Pakli ng isa sa mga kasambahay. Alay, totoo lang ang sinasabi ko. Masarap talaga. Sige na, sige na, Manang Lodring. Naniniwala na ako. Natatawa ang sabi ni Ava. Nagtawanan ang lahat sa kusina. Nang sumilip si Drake, he saw happiness on his wife's lovely face. Hindi makikita na namang pagkailang o arte roon. She seems so used being with them. Hindi niya magawang alisin ang tingin ng maganda mukha ni Ava. Nagulantang si Drake na may magsalita sa kanyang likuran. Maganda siya, hindi ba? Sa yaya ang ding yun. Dahan-dahan siyang umatras at sumandal sa lingding. Mahal siya ng lahat dito sa bahay. At yun ay dahil mahal din niya kaming lahat. Napakabait ng bata na napangasawa mo, iho. Napakalaki ng puso niya. Kahit sino yung maaaring pumasok. Bumuntong hininga si Yaya Anding. Para siyang anghel na dumating dito sa bahay. Hindi ko naiintindihan kung bakit to'y ibang trato mo sa kanya. Ngunit maligayang maligaya ko na sa wakas, pinahahalagahan mo na siya ngayon. He saw tears in the old woman's eyes. He too wanted to cry. Muli siyang sumilip sa kusina. Ava was still smiling. 
Ngiting kayang pumawi sa anumang sakit at lungkot. Ngiting hindi niya kayo naman nakita sa mga labi nito tuwing siya ang karap ng asawa. Why hadn't he seen how lucky he was? Sunod-sunod sa pagpatak ang mga luha ni Ava. Kahit anong pigil niya ayaw tumigil na yun. Naglalakad siya palabas sa ospital. She went to her prenatal check-up alone. Hindi siya sanamahan ni Drake dahil may importante yung nasikaso ang asawa. Isa pa, biglaan ang check-up niya ngayon. Her doctor called her up this morning and set an appointment. Ngayon, alam na nga ni Ava kung bakit. Naalala pa niya naging pag-uusap nila. We have to abort the child. This is for your own safety. This pregnancy is too risky for the both of you. Hindi ka kaya ng puso mong panganak. Sabi ni Dr. Estanislao, This can't be real. Umiiling na sabi naman ni Ava. I wish you could keep the baby, Ava, but I'm sorry. You have to face it. Let go of the child. Kung ipagpapatuloy mo yan, tiyak na mapapahama ka. There's only a little chance he would survive. Lumabas ng klinika ng doktor si Ava. Hindi niya maaaring kilinin din ang buhay ng kanyang anak. Mas mama, tamisin pa ni Ava na siyang mawala kaysa sa kanyang anak. She could not afford to see the sadness to Drake's old face if ever they ever lost a child. Hindi ba rin ang siyang mawala? She could suffer the consequences. Hindi hindi niya hayaang mamadamay ang kanya mag-ama. She would rather lose her life than to lose the child. Drake could live without her but surely he couldn't take the blow kung sa ikalawang pagkakataon ay mawawalan ito ng minamahal. Sigurado sigurado si Ava na mahal ni Drake ang anak nila. Na nariwa sa kanyang isip ang isang pangyayari. Nagbulungan ang mga kasambahay habang si Ayan anding naman ngiti-ngiti. Muling bumalik ang paningin niya kay Drake. Nagpalipat-lipat ang mga mata ni Ava kay Drake at sa supot na nilang asawa. Napakamat sa batok si Drake. Hindi ba gusto mo nito? I just thought that pregnant women like this. Ay lang alin ang pagkakangiti ng asawa. Drake, are you alright? Nag-aano lang talong ni Ava. Ipinilig nito ang ulo which she found very amusing and adorable. Yeah, it's just that... Muling kumamat sa batok si Drake. Hindi na napigilan pa ni Ava ang sariling matawa. Hindi niya alam kung ano nangyayari at nabitawan ni Drake ang supo at dala nito na naging dahilan upang magbagsakan sa paang asawa. Nagtatanon ito habang hawak ang paa na nabagsakan ng malalaking manggang kalabaw. The whole scene was very hilarious, lalo siyang napabunghalit ang tawa. Tila hindi na rin napigilan ang mga nakapaligid sa kanilang eksena at tumawa rin ang mga to. Huminto si Drake sa pagtalo na makita ang pinagtatawa nila to. Ang akala ni Ava magagalit ang asawa, ngunit nakitawa pa ito sa kanila. Isa lang iyon sa mga pagkakataon na nagpapakita ng concern sa kanya si Drake. She knew the reason. She was pregnant with his child. May pagkakataon din na umuwi na maaga si Drake para lang kamustahin siya o mas tamang sabihin ang bata sa kanyang sinapupunan. She did not mind at all. Ang importante hindi nagalit sa kanyang asawa. But sometimes she was worried. Ayaw ni Ava ang sarayan ng kanyang sarili sa ganun. Paano kung bumalik ulit sa dati si Drake? Kailangan niya mag-adjust kapag nagkataon. Naalala pa ni Alte ang isang pangyayari. Can I sit beside you? Gulat na napatingin si Ava kay Drake. Nasa veranda siya takaw po sa couch. Marahan niyang tumango habang bilang pagpayag. Ah, uh, how do you feel? I mean, tila hindi nito madugtungan ang sasabihin. Napapitlag si Drake nang hawakan niyang kamay ng asawa. Then, she places his hand on her tummy. Can you feel it? Ang tinutukoy ni Ava ay ang paggalaw ng baby niya sa kanyang tiyan. His eyes widened in amazement. Goodness, Ava, it moved. It moved underneath my hands. Ani mo ba ang biligan ng laruan si Drake? Her heart was filled with gladness. Idilikit ito ang tenga sa kanyang tiyan. Hey, baby, mommy and daddy are very excited to see you. We love you so much, baby. Tinigasan ni Ava sa kanyang anyo habang patuloy ang paglalakad palabas sa ospital. No, not her child. Sisiguruduhin niyang mabubuhay ang anak. Napapangiti si Drake sa bawat pangiti ni Ava. She was a sight to behold. Kausap ito ang kanilang mga inatang kanyang ate. Ito naghahanda ng mesa na umuwi galing ng States. They were having a small family gathering. Ilang saglit pa'y magkakaharap na sila sa bilog na mesa. So, how is it going, Ava? Tanong ng ate ni Drake. I'm doing good, Ate Faye. 
Sagot ni Ava at saglit tumingin sa kanya. Inaalagaan ka bang mabuti ng asawa mo, ha, iha? Tarong naman ang kanyang mama. It was his turn to look at her. She also looked at him. Tila may hinihintay itong gawin siya. He groaned in one day when she realized what it was. Inihintay ni Ava ang tapakan niyang paan ito. He smiled at her instead. Inaalagaan po ako mabuti ni Drake. She smiled back at him at tila tumigal sa pag-inog ang mundo ni Drake. In fact, he's always there. Masyado nag-aalala. Pagkatapos kumain, niyaya niyang maglakad-lakad si Ava. Halos limang buwan na ang siya ng asawa ngunit hindi pa yun kaanong malaki. Maliit magbunti si Ava. She looked pretty amazing too. Pregnancy really suited her. He laced his fingers with hers. Natigilan si Ava at napatitig sa magkadaop ng mga kamay nila. Inilibot naman ni Drake ang palingin sa paligid, pretending not to notice the puzzlement on her face. Baby, what do you want our child to be? Tanong ni Drake sa asawa kapag kuwan. Nanlalaki ang mga matang napatitig sa kanya si Ava. Tila ba tinubuan ng mga pangit at sungay si Drake? It must be the term of endearment he used. He smiled and repeated the question. Tila naman nahamig na nito ang sarili. Kahit ano, babae man o lalaki, mamahalin ko siya. Ikaw, ano bang gusto mo? Sana babae, para kasing ganda mo. Pero ayos lang din sa akin kahit ano. Alam ko namang aalagan at mamahalin mo siya. He saw a strange emotion in her eyes. Something like sadness. He touched her face. She trembled beneath his touch. Dahan-dahan ay binaba ni Drake ang kanyang kamay. Ava, are you afraid of me? He asked softly. Umiling ang asawa. I never feared you, not once. Tila balsa mong humaplos sa puso ni Drake ang sinabi ni Ava. His hope soared. Her voice, which was filled with sincerity and love, gave him a reason to hope that she might still be in love with him. Biglang umihip ang malakas na hangin. Agad na niyakap niya si Ava. Yung uri ng yakap na nagpaparating ng lahat ng kanyang nalaramdaman para sa asawa. Hindi pa sigurado si Drake kung mahal na talaga niya, si Ava, but surely he was on his way. Ipinato ni Drake ang kanyang baba sa ibaba ng ulo ng asawa. He could feel her shaking and he knew she was crying. He would never exchange this moment for anything in this world. Hindi alam ni Ava kung nalaramdaman ni Drake ang kanyang pagduha. She was crying but it was because she was happy. Noon pa, pangarap na ni Ava na pahalagahan siya ni Drake. At ngayon nararanasan niya iyon, kahit pa nga dahil lang yun sa anak nila. Masaya na rin siya kahit pa paano. She would die happily. Lilisanin niyang mundong ibabaw na walang pangamba. Sigurado si Avang mamahal na talagaan ni Drake ang kanyang anak. Thank you, Drake. I love you. Sumagitsit ang mga gulong ng sasakyan ni Drake sa tindi ng impact ng kanyang pagpreno. Kung hindi siya nakasot ang seatbelt, malamang sumubsob na siya sa dashboard. Meron siyang business deal sa isang restaurant sa Benavista. Palabas na sila ng kanyang kliyente roon nang hindi sinasasang nakita niya si Dos Dr. Estanislao, ang ob ni Ava. Papasok naman sa lato ng establishment o doktora. Kinamusta sa kanya ni Dr. Estanislao si Ava. Tila hindi natural ang pagkakatanong nito kaya ay pinasya ni Drake na magpaiwan at kausapan ng doktora. Tila bombang sumabog sa harap ni Drake ang sinabi ng doktora. Her life is in danger sa balit mapilit siya. She doesn't want to give up her child. May komplikasyon daw ang pagbubuntis ni Ava dahil mahina ang puso ng asawa. She had heart disease. They had to take out the child or else she would die. Nang hina sa Drake sa nalaman. Wala po bang ibang paraan, Dok? Marahang umiling ito. Milagro na lamang ang maaaring makapagsalba sa buhay na mag-ina mo. 30% lamang ang kasiguruhan na mabubuhay siya. Kailangan mong umayili ng isa sa kanila. He drove home like a madman. Halos pali pa rin ni Drake ang kanyang sasakyan. Why did you do that? She did not even consult him. Dali-daling tawa ko mapasok ng kabahayan si Drake. Sa pagmamadali, muntik na siyang mabangga si Yaya Andeng. Tinakbo niya ang salid nilang mag-asawa ngunit wala si Ava roon. He had an idea where she was. Binuksan ni Drake ang kalugdog na pinto. They had converted it into a nursery. Natigil sa sakmang magbasok na marinig ang tinig ng kanyang asawa. And you know what, baby? Your daddy is very handsome. The most handsome man I've ever seen in my entire life. He is like a prince. Bumungis niya si Ava. I am not being biased, baby. I'm just telling the truth. Sumilip si Drake at takitang nakahiga si Ava sa kama habang hinihimas ang tiyan. Ang swerte ko nga anak eh, kasi ako ang pinakasalan ng daddy mo. He's thoughtful, kind and caring. Sumilay sa mga labi ni Ava ang isang napakagandang ide. Your daddy loves you baby and I love you too. He fought the urge to run to her. I love you dad the first time I saw him. Oh anak, na first love at first sight ang mommy mo. Unang beses na nakita ko siya, alam ko na agad sa sarili kong mahal ko na siya. She was misty-eyed. Maswerte ako kahit hindi ako mahal ng daddy mo. 
at wala akong pagsisisihan sa loob ng walong taon na minahal ko siya. At tanong wala akong pagsisisihan na pinindi kong ipagpatuloy ka. Mahal na mahal kita anak, kayo ng daddy mo. Hindi ako natatakot mawala because I'm sure daddy will take care of you. Parang sasabog ang puso ni Drake sa tindi ng emosyon. Nahiya siyang bigla sa kanyang sarili. Ang sama-sama niya. Gusto niyang napitan si Ava at yakapin to reassure her that he cared for her, that he had fallen in love with her. Alam mo ba ang pangarap ni mommy baby? I dream of your dad's smile every day. Sana mapangiti mo ang daddy mo araw-araw. Ang isa pang pangarap ko anak, sana maging masaya ang daddy mo. And when I die, he will be happy because he can now marry the woman of his choice. Hindi ako nagkaalala dahil alam kong pipiliin niya ang babaeng magmamahal sa kanya at sayo. Pangarap ko rin na mahalin siya at mahalin din niya. She wiped her tears away. I'm happy now. My dream came true. God gave you to us, baby. You just made my wishes came true. He couldn't stand it anymore. Tila na uupos na kanilang napasandal sa dingding si Drake. Kapag guay dumas to siya paupo sa sahig. Nagunahan sa pagpatak ang kanyang mga luha. His heart was breaking. Noon lang niya totoong narealize kung gaano siya kaswerte. At noon lang din narealize si Drake kung gaano siya kasama. Bumalik sa kanyang isip ang lahat-lahat ng kanyang ginawa kay Ava. All the pain he had caused her physical, verbal, mental, and most of all the emotional pain. Ang pinakamasakit pa niyon, walang binanggit ng asawa na anuman sa mga yon. Tila walang anuman kay Ava ang lahat. Nang sakit na dinurot ni Drake. Her hard, her speak again. If your dad ever loses you, he will surely be devastated. Hindi niya kakayanin. But if he were to lose me, he wouldn't mind it. I cannot afford to see him sad. Ayoko makita palit ang lungkot at sakit sa mga mata niya. You will make him smile every day. Mamamatay ako maligaya knowing that everything will fall into the right place. I love you, baby. I love you and your dad. He couldn't stand it anymore. Tumayo si Drake at tumabas ng bahay. Lumulan siya ng sasakyan at pinaharulot iyon palayo. Gulong-gulong ang isip ni Drake. He was a monster. He did not deserve someone like Ava. Wala siyang karapatan na kahit kaunting pagtingin mula sa asawa. Yet he still loved her. Yes, he had fallen in love with her. Marahil noon pa namang unang beses makita niya si Ava o noong unang beses nahalikan niya ang kamay nito. Nanlalabong pa ni Drake dahil sa mga luha. Paano niya maitatama ang lahat? Paano pa niya aayusin ang mga nagawang kasalanan? Hindi niya kayang mawala ang kanyang anak. Ngunit hindi rin niya kakayaning mawala si Ava. Gulong-gulong isip ni Drake. Tuloy, sa biglang pagliko, hindi niya nakontrol ang manibela. Sumalpok siya sa kasalubong na kotse. Then everything went black. Puting kisa may ang namulatan ni Dave. He was aching all over, lalo sa parting ulo. He was still alive. Wala siya nararamdaman kakaiba maliban sa pagkirot ng ulo. Kinapa niya iyon. Nakabandage pa lang kanyang ulo. Tinangka niyang kumilos ang maramdaman ng mainit na bagay na nakapatong sa kanyang kamay. Pagbaling Jake sa kaliwa ay nakita niya si Ava. Her hands were on his. Nakasubsob ang asawa sa gilid ng kama. Inlist si Drake ang mga hibla ng bohok na naligaw sa mukha ni Ava. Then, he slowly traced the contours of her lovely face. Drake, how do you feel? May masakit ba sa'yo? Are you alright? Are you... Tuloy na itong napahagulgol. He slowly brought her to his chest. Stop crying. I'm alright. Believe me, baby. Inipo ni Drake ang lahat ng lakas at marang iniangat ang asawa. Then, he slowly wiped away her tears. Don't cry. I can't bear the sight of you when you are crying. I'm alright, baby. I was so afraid. I thought I'd lost you forever. She burst into tears again. He used all his might not to cry too. I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry if I made you worried. He touched her face. She almost fainted when she learned he had an accident. She heard he went to the hospital. Hindi niya alam ang buong detalye ang sabi lamang sa kanya na aksidente si Drake. Nakahinga lang na maluwag si Ava nang tuyakin sa kanya ng tukta na ligtas ng asawa. Sugat sa ulo at ilang gasgas lamang ang tinamon ni Drake. But despite the doctor's reassurance, she still couldn't help herself from worrying. Hindi niya siguro alam ang gagawin kung may masamang mangyayari sa asawa. She opened her eyes and looked at his face. They just stared at each other for a long moment. Tila ito na may kinakabisa rin ang bawat bahagi ng kanyang mukha. She noticed a strange emotion in his eyes. Something like guilt. But why would he feel guilty? There was something else in his eyes but she wasn't sure what it was. She had never seen that emotion in his eyes before. Drake? Shh! He silenced her. Come here, baby. Iginiya siya pahiga sa tabi ng asawa. But Drake? She tried to protest. Be still, Ava. I wanna hold you like this. He felt her stiffen. Nayakap siya na mahigpet ni Drake. He never ever held her like this before. Sa mga pangarap lang niya nangyayari ang ganun. 
Gustong ko natin ni Ava ang sarili para siguraduhin hindi siya na nanaginip. But his son and his warmth made her realize that this was real and not just part of her dream. Tears of happiness fell from her eyes. This was a thousand times better than all those fantasies she had ever had. Tila sa Drake naman umiyak din. She could feel it from the way he breathed, though she did not really understand why he was crying. Still, she fell into a deep sleep. Ilang minuto nang tulog si Ava, gising pa rin si Drake. He did not want to cry in front of her but he could not stop himself. God, he could hold her forever like this. Natatakot si Drake. He never felt something like this for a woman, not even with Savannah. He thought what he left for Vanna was real. But when she felt for Savannah, nothing compared to what he felt for Ava right now. He was afraid to fall asleep, afraid that she might be gone when he woke up. He kissed her temple as another tear fell from her, even more tightly. He held tightly. Mahal kita, Ava. Maya maya pa'y ginupo ng pagod at antok si Drake. Then Drake opened his eyes. Agad bumangon siya nang ma-realize na mag-isa na lamang siya sa kama. Ngunit napahiga ulit siya na sumakit ang kanyang ulo. Nasaan si Ava? Nasagot ang tanong ni Drake nang bumukas ang pinto at pumasok si Ava. She was smiling brightly. His world suddenly lit up as if a ray of sunshine had entered the room. May bit-bit na paper bag ang asawa. Kasunod nito si Yaya Andeng. Inilapag ng asawa sa side table ang mga bit-bit. Kahit nahihirapan, sinikap ni Jake ang bumangon. Paglapit ni Ava sa kanya, agad na kinabig siya ng asawa at niyakap na mahigpit. Drake? He looked at Yaya Andeng. The old woman's eyes were beaming with happiness. Pinahid ang matanda ang gilid ng mga mata nito. Yaya Andeng was looking at them contentedly. Mauna na ako sa inyong mga anak. Paanan mong matanda? Kumala si Ava sa pagkakayakap sa kanya. Pero, akala ko po ba Yaya? Kaya mo nang alagaan ang asawa mo. Makakagulo lang ako sa inyo. Ngumiti na makahulugan si Yaya Andeng. Si Yaya talaga? Namumulang sabi ni Ava. Oo nga naman, baby. Makakaistorbo lang si Yaya sa atin. Pili ang kalindatan pa ni Jake si Yaya Andeng. Nalang nagpamula kay Ava. O siya, sige. Maiwan ko na kayo. Pagkalabas ni Yaya Andeng, agad na inabala ni Ava ang sarili sa paghanda ng pagkain ni Drake. Hindi tumitingin sa kanyang asawa habang ginagawa yun. Nagtimpla ng gata si Ava at binigay iyon sa kanya. Milk? But I don't drink milk, baby, sabi ni Drake. Kumulat ang noo ni Ava. But you have to. Seryosong sabi nito at inabot ang mag sa kanya. Alright, alright, you win. I am going to drink this. Just don't stare at me like that again. Nagsasayo pa rin ang mata ni Altea sa katuwaan. Kumulat ang noo ni Ava. You were looking at me as if you were ready to spank me if I did not obey you. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. He drank the milk. Hindi nila pag ni Jake ang mug hanggat niya ibos ang laman niyon. Pagkatapos silang uminom at ibaba, ang mug ay biglang tumawa si Ava. Si Jake naman napakulot ang noo. May gatas ka sa ibabaw ng bibig mo. Paliwanag ni Ava. Mukha ka tuloy may puting bigote. You look so funny and boyish, just like the first time I saw you. At muli, tumawang asawa. She was talking but he did not understand a word she said. Mas na-focus ang atansya ni Jake sa bawat paggalaw sa bibig ng asawa. Drake, naiintindihan mo ba ako? Untag ni Ava. Nope. Oh, alright. I'm gonna say it ag... Hindi pa natatrapa si Drake si Ava sa sinasabi nito. He pulled her on top of him and kissed her senseless. Sinunda ni Ava ang paggalaw ng mga labi ni Drake. They shifted positions. She was now under him. He was unstoppable. She could not even protest. For goodness sake, they were inside the hospital room. Buwa ba ang mga labi ni Drake sa kanyang leeg? Drake, we're in the hospital. At hindi ka mapagwagaling. He shut her up with a kiss. Who says I'm not well? He sexily asked and answered her mouth. As a matter of fact, I can make love to my wife the whole day. She gasped at the intensity of his desire. Tila na isang sa inilog si Ava at tuloy-tuloy sa pag-agos. He explored her silly skin. His hands were burning against her flesh. Kiss me back, baby. And so she did. He pulled her up and she needed, ended up strangling him. She was burning with passion. She was about to explore him when she heard knocks on the door. Tila hindi yun narinig ni Drake. He just continued nipping her shoulder blade. Kinilangan pa niyang itulak pala yung asawa para lang patigilin sa ginagawa. Humihingal na mayo si Ava sa asawa at inayos ang kanyang sarili. Tila si Drake may nagulat din sa intensidad ng lovemaking nila. Ilang araw na, wala na makalabas ng ospital si Drake. Magaling na mga sugatin sa ulo, gayon din ang mga gasgas sa braso. 
natutuwa naman si Abba sa mga nangyayari. A lot of things had changed in the relationship. He had changed in ways she had never imagined, not even in her wildest dreams. He was now a different person. She even saw a strange emotion in his eyes that she couldn't name. Isang araw, pinagduto siya ni Drake. She comfortably sat at the kitchen table, watching him. Drake, are you sure you know what you're doing? Naaaliw na tanong ni Ava. Nalalalim kasi ang gatlasan on Drake sa pagkakatitig sa niluluto. Tiyo nahihiyang bumaling sa kanyang asawa at pilit ng umiti. Yeah, just stay put baby, I've got this. By all means. She said as her eyes twinkled with gladness. Sinimulang pagsamasamahin ni Drake ang mga regado. Tila seryosong seryoso ito sa ginagawa. He looked cute and lovable. Drake, I can help you a bit. Nakangiting sabi ni Ava. Nahihiyang tuming ito sa kanya at napakamot sa ulo. Ah, uh, a little help maybe? Natawa si Ava. Natawa rin si Drake. Tumayo si Ava at tumabay sa asawa. Let me see that? Napakulot siya na matitigan ang laman ng kawali. Drake, what is this? Minudo. Sagot ito haba napapakamot sa ulo. Halatang naiilang. Really? It doesn't look like it. She found his expression very amusing and lovable at the same time. Lahat talaga na mareaksyon ni Drake hindi nakakaligtas sa paningin ni Ava. Sorry baby, seems like I got the recipe wrong. You don't really cook, right? As a matter of fact, I do. Bigla itong namula sa kahiyan. We can still save this. Talaga, baby? His eyes beamed with happiness. Tila batang binigan ng candy. Aha, uh -huh. all you have to do is to sit back and relax. She literally forced him to sit on the chair that she was sitting on a while ago. But maybe, he tried to protest but she cut him off. Ako na ang bahala. She started weaving magic and his minudo. Even if she couldn't see him, she was sure he was looking at her. She could feel his tears. Maya maya pa'y natapasan ni Aba ang pagliligtas sa minudo ni Drake. He set the table. Ilang saglit pa'y magharap na silang kumakain. Nang sumubo si Drake, nakatitig lang si Altea. Hinihintay ang maging reaksyon ng asawa. Ninerbyo si Aba. Naalala kasi niya ang panahong ininsulto ni Drake ang kanya mga luto. He slowly chewed the food. She nervously waited for his response. She almost shouted when he smiled broadly. This is good. Puri ni Drake. Luto mo yan, no? She started eating too. Nope. Yung luto ko, tiyak na hindi natin makakain. You saved my minudo. You're really an angel. Ito na ang pinakamasarap na minudo na tikman ko. He gave her his most beautiful smile ever. Kulang ang sabihing tila sumikat ang araw sa harap ni Drake. Her world seemed to stop. She almost heard fireworks. Her chest tightened in controlled emotion. Hindi niya malaman ang gagawin. Baby, are you really that hungry? She looked at him and she noticed the laughter in his eyes. She shyly smiled at him. He smiled back at her. Napanlok si Ava at napatitig din sa mga labi ng asawa. She closed her eyes and waited for his kiss. Ang tagal naman. She impatiently said to herself. Nang di pa rin niya malamdaman ang mga labi ni Drake, daan-daan niyang aminulat ang isang mata. He was looking at her. Napadilat si Ava ng tuluyan. Malapit na malapit ang mga mukha nila sa isa't isa. She could almost see her reflection in his eyes. You've got smudges on your lips, Anna Drake. He wiped her lips with his thumb finger. And as much as I want to kiss you, Yaya and Day and the rest of the tropes are watching. Tama ito. Dahil nakita ni Ava sa gilid ng kanyang mga mata, si Yaya Andeng at ibang kasambahay na animo mga kilit-kite na nagsisikuhan at nagbubulungan haba nakasilip sa entrada ng kusina. Saan ba talaga tayo pupunta, Drake? Tanong ni Ava. They were driving out of Benavista. She felt excited and nervous at the same time. She could sense that he was up to something. I told you, baby. It's a surprise. He concentrated on his driving. Ilang saglit pa, tumigil sila sa isang malabak na lupain. Hindi alam ni Ava kung anong lugar iyon at noon lang din siya nakarating doon. May kahoy na bako na nakapaligid sa lupain. Hindi niya alam kung gaano kalabak iyon but she guess it was thousands of hectares. What place is this, Drake? Tanong ni Ava habang tinatanong buong lupain. You'll find out soon but for now? May nilabas na pa niyong asawa. What's that for? Nagtatakan tanong ni Ava. I have a surprise for you. He blindfolded her. Hindi ko naman birthday ah. She wore flat sandals at match her maternity dress. Naramdaman ni Ava sa kanyang paa at binti ang mga damo. She was excited to see his surprise. Kung ano man yun, sigurado maganda yun. He wouldn't blindfold her if it was not something that would really surprise her. Baby, I am going to remove your blindfold now. But don't open your eyes just yet. 
Marahang tumangaw si Aldea habang inaalis niya ang pantakip sa kanyang mga mata. I will count to three, then you can open your eyes. All right. Her heart was pumping madly. One, two, three. She gasped when she finally opened her eyes. She must be dreaming a very beautiful dream. Puro ng bulaklak ang paligid. Roses, crimsons, tulips. Name it. Nagaganda ang bulaklak na hindi niya kayang palaranan ng iba ni Ava. In the middle of the flowers was her drake. As if in a trance, she slowly walked towards him. She stopped a few inches away from him. Their eyes did the talking. His eyes were clouded with an emotion that she could not name. This is all yours. This place is all yours. I'm planning to convert it into a villa and name it after you. It will be called Villa Ava. He wrapped her in his arms. Gustong gusto magsalita ni Ava but could not find the right words to say. Her whole being was clouded with an inex inexplicable emotion. Mahal kita, Ava. Pahayag ni Drake. She froze. Maybe she was just hallucinating. She heard him say that he loved her because that was what she wanted to hear from him. Mahal na mahal kita, Ava Sullivan. Tears fell down her cheeks. It was the very first time he called her Mrs. Sullivan. Her hallucinations were getting better by the minute. She hugged him tighter than he did. She frantically clutched at his shirt or subs came. One after the other. Dahan dahan niya inileon ni Jake. He slowly wiped her tears away. She was surprised to see him crying too. Alam ko. Hindi ka maniniwala sa akin. But I'm telling you this over and over. Mahal na mahal kita, Ava. I don't know how or when. Maybe it was the first time I kissed your hand or maybe it was the first time I ever laid my eyes on you. Sincerity was evident in his eyes. Drake erased his hands to stop her from talking. Let me finish first. Marami ka nang ginawa for our marriage to work out. I am not worthy of you. I am not worthy of your love. May namumuong mga luha sa mga mata ni Drake. Kung kaya ko lang ibalik ang panahon, gagawin ko. Sorry for being such a jerk, for thinking the worst about you. I was blinded by my anger. I'm sorry for thinking you married me because of my money, when all along you married me because you love me. Shocked by his revelations, dahan-dahan mo po sa isang nakatumbang puno si Ava. Ava, I'm sorry for everything, for all the pain that I've caused you. I swear, pinagsasiyan ko lahat ng yun. Her tears fell. They were tears of joy. Mahal siya ni Drake. This was the happiest moment of her life. Nagangat siya ng paningin kay Drake. Remorse and guilt were written on his face. She slowly walked towards him and sat beside him. She wanted to wipe his tears away and to reassure him that she loved him too and that she was not angry at him. She raised her hand and touched his face. Kapag umiyak ka, naiiyak din ako. Kapag nalulungkot ka, parang nadudurog ang puso ko. At kapag nakikita kita na sasaktan, dobleng sakit ang nararamdaman ko. She looked straight into his eyes. Mahal kita na higit pa sa buhay ko. Hindi ko rin alam kung bakit eh. Ang alam ko lang, nagising na lang ako isang umaga na mahal na mahal kita. I married you because I love you so much. She cupped his face with his hands. Then, she kissed him with all the love that she had for him. Mahal ko ang anak natin but I can't lose you. Nanigas si Ava sa sinabi ni Drake. Kapag guwan ko malasi sa pagkakayakap sa asawa, she could see frustration and conclusion in his face. Dr. Estanislao told me everything. Why did you lie to me? Napayo ko si Ava. How can I say it? Yeah, how can you say it to a monster like me? He shook his head and then he held her hands. Hindi ko alam ko anong gagawin. Now, it was her turn to shake her head. You don't have to do anything. He kissed her hands. I don't want to let you go. I can't. Tears were starting to fall from his eyes again. Bahagyang tumiga sa ni Ava. I am not letting go of our child either. Halos matanggal ang kanyang ulo sa pag-iling. Pinagdikit ni Drake ang mga noon nila. I know. I know, baby, and I love you more for that. I love you both. You and our child are the most beautiful things that ever happened to me. They did not let go of each other's hand. She just couldn't say it, but she couldn't let go of him too. She felt like screaming. Life was unfair. Pwede na sila ni Drake ngayon dahil mahal na rin siya ng asawa. Ngunit hindi magagawa ni Ava na isa karipisya ang buhay ng sariling anak para lamang sa pansariling kaligayahan. Sana tumigil ang oras sa pagtakbo. Hawak ni Ava ang kamay ni Drake ng mahigpit na tila ba makakaya niyang pigilan ng oras. 
Mahal na mahal kita. Hindi ko alam kung paano nangyari pero hawak mo na ngayon ang buhay ko. Iniangat ni Joy kang kanyang kamay. Hawak na ng mga kamay na ito ang buong pagkatao ko. Si Ava na ang kusang yumakap sa asawa. Nahiling niyang sana may paraan pa kung sana lang. Ava was at the veranda enjoying the evening air. She couldn't think straight. Mabuti na lang at tila balsamang humahaplos sa bawat himaymay ng kanyang kaluluwa ang malamig na hangin panggabi. Nevertheless, uncertainty filled her heart. Hindi tamang pinakita niya kay Drake kung gaano niya ito kamahal. Limang buwan na ang nasa sinapupunan ni Ava. Ibig sabihin apat na buwan na lamang ilalagay niya sa piling ni Drake. And showing him her love would be selfishness on her part. Iiwan din niyang asawa. Ang dapat na gawin ni Ava sanayin si Drake na wala siya. It was the painful truth. She would die in four months, time, and they couldn't do anything about it. It was better for them to get used to that fact now. She had to. Maya-maya, may yumakap sa mga braso niya mula sa likuran. Wala nang may iyayakap sa kanya, kundi si Drake. He buried his face against her shoulder and inhaled her scent. She closed her eyes. How could she think of ways to be apart from him if he was this close? Promise me, we will never give up, Annie Drake. Nagsimula na namang manikip ang dibdim ni Ava. She closed her eyes and savored the moment. This moment would stay in her mind and in her heart forever. Napadilit si Ava nang bumitiw sa kanya si Drake nang marahan siyang ipihit paharap nito. She tried to look away but he cupped her face and captured her gaze. She was drowning in his eyes. Walang ibang masasalamin sa mga mata ni Drake kundi sensilidad at determinasyon. Promise me we won't give up. We won't let fate overcome us. We will fight for our love no matter what. Mabubuhay kayo ng anak natin. That I promise you. Drake, I'm gonna die. No, don't say that. I will be dumb if I'm going to let you die without doing anything. You will leave and don't you ever say that you're gonna die. Tumigas ng bahagya ang ayon ni Drake at muling napuno ng determination. Drake, muling dumaloy ang kanyang mga luha. We are going to talk to Dr. Estenis now tomorrow. We will take whatever chances we fought. Kaano man kaliit yun. If she turns us down, then we're going to ask for a second opinion. We can have the best doctors in the country or even abroad. He was crying now. Higit pa marahil sa ginawa niyang pag-ihak. She believed him. She had all the reasons in the world to give up. But his eyes told her a different story. His eyes gave her so much hope. Kung hindi lang sana sinabi ni Drake na mahal siya nito, hindi sana maging komplikadong lahat. She would die peacefully and contentedly. Pero ngayon, ngayong alam na ni Ava na mahal siya ng asawa, ay hindi niya maiwasang umasa. She wanted to live. She did not want to leave him and their child. She wanted to be with them. Just like what he told her, they would take whatever chances they've got. I love you, Drake, and I will fight for our family no matter what. Hindi ko kayo iiwan ang anak natin. Nakangiti si Ava kahit tuloy-tuloy na ang pagtulo ng kanyang mga luha. He brought her close to his chest. I love you too, and I'm not letting go of you. Hope springs eternal. Now she believed in that. Hindi din posible dating mahalin si Drake kung natagkatotoo iyon. Noon walang dahilan para lumaban si Ava. But it was a different story now. Magkasama nilang lalaban at naharapin ang lahat. Mahigpit na magkahugpong ang mga kamay ni na Ava at Drake. Papunta sila sa klinik ni Dr. Estanislao. Drake kissed his wife San and held it tight. Ayaw niyang bitawan yun kahit saglit. He had been such a jerk but that was before. He would do everything within his power to save her. Last night surpassed everything. Wala pa siyang taong pinagkuanan ng ganun. Kay Ava pa lang siya nangako. He was willing to give up everything for her and their child. Ilang saglit pa, huminto na sila sa tapat ng ospital kung saan naraloon ang klinik ni Dr. Estanislao. Ilang saglit pa, nasa loob sila ng klinik. He inhaled deeply. This is it. He gave his wife a reassuring look. Please have a seat, Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan, and ni Dr. Estanislao. Umupo sila sa visitor's chair pagkatapos makipagkamay sa doktora. They were still holding each other's hands tightly. So, what is your decision? Talon ng doktora. We're keeping the baby. Mabilis ang sagot ni Drake. As I have said before, the pregnancy would be too risky, Ava. You might die of complications. Your heart might not take it. Huminga ng malalim ang doktora. Are you sure you want this? Inunahan sa ni Ava sa pagsagot. Yes. We're willing to take even the slightest chance, please. Dr. Estanislao, help us. Marahang tubango ang doktor. To tell you honestly, the chances of survival are very low. Only a miracle can change these things as it is. Please, Dr. Estanislao, I will give everything. I'm willing to pay twice. No, 
tries as much. Take all my money if you want. Just save my wife and my child. Pinokprok na Jake ang desk ng doktora. Jake! Hinawakan ni Ava ang kanyang kamay upang payapain siya. Nang tingnan niya ito'y mabilis sumupa ang galit niya. I will help you. I will try my best. Wika ni Dr. Estanislao. I'll check up on you again. Maaring maliit lamang ang chances pero sigurado, pangahawakan pa rin ninyo noon gano'n pa man kaliit yon. Might as well hold on to whatever hope you've got. Your problem is not congenital heart disease, but congestive heart failure. Ani Dr. Estanislao. What does that mean? Talong ni Ava hamamawigwig na nakahawak sa braso ni Drake. Kung congenital ang case mo, we need further tests done on you. We need to determine on what stage your sickness is in. Malamang na wala na talagang pag-asa. But I can see some hope if you got congestive heart failure. Agad ang pagbaha ng tuwa sa dibdib ni Ava. Maging si Drake nagliwanag sa labis sa katuwaan. Is there any medication I could take to cure this? Tanong ni Drake. Any medication you take during pregnancy can affect your baby. Her heart sank. So, we can't do anything about it? Mabini ngumiti ang doktora. However, I can suggest a medication with low dosage. I can't promise you that this would heal you completely, but at least this can help. What do you mean? Tanong ni Drake. It's a good thing that you haven't had any attacks yet. We've got to be careful about this. Or should I say, you've got to take good care of your wife, Mr. Sullivan. I will give you pointers on how to avoid attacks. She paused for a while. Our chances of success are improving. Marami kang dapat iwas sa mga bagay, Ava. Kung hindi ka rin magkakaroon ng mild attack hanggang sa bago ka mga anak, maaring makaligtas kayo ng anak mo. But then again, I'm not giving you 100% reassurance. We will take whatever chances we've got. Punong-puno ng pag-asa ang tinig at mukha ni Drake. He kissed her hand and smiled at her. She smiled back at him. Marami pang sinabi ang doktora. May payo tungkol sa kalagayan niya. Drake was so serious about it. He even took down notes. There might still be a chance for them. Her heart was filled with hope at the thought. Another two months passed and Ava was now seven months pregnant with her baby. So far, everything was going according to plan. Napagpasya nila ni Drake na wag nang maipaalam kahit kaninong kanyang kalagayan. Maging sa mga magulang nila, itinago rin nila ang totoo. Malaki ang naitulong ng mga pani Dr. Estanis now. Tuloy-tuloy ang pag-inom ni Ava ng mga medication at vitamins. Regular din ang pagbisita nila sa doktora. Hindi na siya nagpapa-ultrasound upang alamin ang gender ng kanyang anak. They wanted it to be surprise. Drake went home early every day. He took good care of her. He was everything she could ask for. Madalas nasa bayang asawa at inaalagaan siya. He treated her like a princess and he was her prince. There were times when she couldn't avoid thinking about that. Despite everything they did, the fact still remained that she could die in two months' time. The hands of time were moving faster. Ayaw ni Ava na lubusang umasa. Ngunit kabalik na ang nangyayari kapag nakatitig siya sa mga mata ni Drake. She could actually hope for a better future with him around. His eyes gave her the promise of a better tomorrow and a bright future with him. She wanted to spend every day with him beside her. One day, they went to the beach. It was a private beach resort in San Marcelino which was owned by Drake's parents. He brought her there one afternoon. Alas 5 na ng hapon kaya hindi na mainit ang sikat ng araw. She lay on the blanket on the sand while her husband flew a kite. She did not know that flying a kite on the beach was even possible until now. Lumingon sa Drake sa kanya at kinawayan siya. She could see him smiling from a distance. She waved back at him. Come here, baby. I will teach you how to fly a kite. He shouted so she could hear him. Umiling si Ava. Ikaw na lang. Manonood na lamang ako. She shouted back at him. I love you, baby. She giggled involuntarily. I love you too. She could never be happier. Ilang saglit pa'y nakita niyang tumatak mapaparapit sa kanya si Drake. Nang makalapit o kinintilan siya ng asawa ng halik sa mga labi. I'm hungry, babe. Let's eat. Yaya ni Drake sa kanya. Okay, iahanda. No, babe. I will be the one to prepare our meal. Puto nito sa kanya, sabay kindad. He earnestly prepared her food. Nilabas si Drake ang lahat ng laman ng picnic basket at mabilis ang inihain. Napapalakpak si Ava sa dami ng mga pagkain. Everything looked yummy. Most of it were fruits and vegetables. Babe, tataba ako nito. Kunwari reklamo pa ni Ava. He laughed merrily. Don't worry, babe. I'd still love you kahit maging kasinlapad ka pa na refrigerator. Woo! Bola! Ang lakas ang tawa ni Drake. I'm telling you the truth, baby. Dumukwang ito at hinilot ang kanyang noo upang alisin ang gatla roon. Napangiti si Altea. Nang ako magsasalita ito ay dumampot sa ng kat-kat. Wala nang balat iyon kaya't sinalpak niya iyon ang buo sa bibig ng asawa. 
Now it was her turn to laugh. She immediately gathered some grapes and put them all inside his mouth so he could not speak. In turn, he picked up the bowl of fruit salad and got a spoonful of it and did the same thing to her. Walang nagawa si Ava kundi ngayain ang isinubo ng asawa. Hindi pa man niya halos nalulunok iyon, muli na naman siyang sinubuan ni Drake. Siguro samba ko lang kanyang mukha dahil pagkalakas-lakas ang tawa ng asawa. Muli siyang dumampot ng ubas at sinubo yun kay Drake. He did the same thing to her while laughing. Gustong mainis ni Ava at gumanti ulit ngunit natawa na lamang siya. He reached for her and kissed her. Hindi niya na nagawang tumugon dahil sa bigla siya na outbalance. They fell to the ground sideways. Nanatili lamang sila nakahiga at nakatagilid, looking into each other's eyes. He traced the contours of her face. I wish we could stay like this forever. She held his face, her throat constricted with sudden emotion. Hindi naman pwedeng nandito lang tayo habang buhay. Paano kayo kung umulan? She tried to crack a joke. He smiled. We will be together forever, Ava Vasquez. That I promise you. He kissed her hands. Right then and there, she felt like bursting into tears. She wanted to believe that they could be together forever. Mahal kita, Drake Sullivan. Whatever happens, I will always love you. Bumangon si Drake at tumayo. Nilahad nito ang kamay sa harap ni Ava. She reached for it and as soon as the was on her feet, he hugged her. Walang mangyayari sa iyo, Ava. Walang mangyayari sa inyo ng anak natin. She wished that time would stand still. His arms promised her safe heaven. The warmth he gave brought her the highest comfort she could ever wish for. Ava was busy preparing dinner. Isang oras na lamang at darating ng mga magulang nila ni Drake. She invited them over for dinner. Hindi alam ni Drake ang kanyang ginawa. She wanted to surprise him. Tiyak na mauunang dumating ang mama at papa ni Ava dahil sa kalating bahay lamang nakatira ang mga magulang. Hindi gaya ng mga magulang ni Drake. Isa pa, namimiss na rin naman niya ang kanyang mga magulang. Halos silang buwan na rin din nakikita ni Ava ang mama at papa. She was almost nine months pregnant with her baby. Ma'am Ava, parang may malaking okasyon na. Pula ng isang kasambahay na katulong nila ni Aya Anding sa paghanda. Oo nga ma'am, segunda ng isa. Darating sina mama at papa, pati sina mommy at daddy. Maiksing paliwanag ni Ava habang inilalagay sa serving plate ang mga ulam. Akala ko po kasi... Akala mo ano? Curious sa tanong niya. Akala ko po, anniversary ninyo ni sir. Tila nahihiyang sabi ng kasambahay. Oh, kayo talaga. Umila na naman yung pagkachismosa ninyo. Sawata ni Yaya Andeng sa mga kasambahay. Napaisip ng malalim si Ava. Tama, anniversary nga nila ni Drake. Nakalimutan na rin niya yun dahil sa mga pangyayari nitong mga narang buwan. Kung siya nakalimutan niya, malamang ganoon din si Drake. Bahagyang nalungkot si Ava sa isipin yun. Ngunit agad binaroon niya yon sa isip. Drake loved her and that was enough for her. Binadali nilang paghanda kaya naman bago mag alas 7, natapos na nilang lahat ang preparasyon. Eksaktong kakatapos lang nila na makaramdam ng bahagyang pagkahilo si Ava. Tila kinakapos din siya ng hininga. She felt a sudden tense of terror. Marin siyang napakapit sa upuan habang sapo ang kanyang dibdib. Ava? Agad din nilohan siya ni Yaya Anding. Umikot ang paningin ni Ava. The last thing she saw was Drake, arms coming around her before everything went blank. Ava's eyelids felt so heavy she couldn't open them immediately. She heard noises around her, familiar voices. Pinilit niyang imulat ng kanyang mga mata. Ang nag-aala lang mukha ni Drake ang una niyang nasilayan. He lays his fingers around hers. She could see tears in his eyes. Ang sumunod na nakita ni Ava ay ang nag-aala lang mukha ng mga magulang nila. She automatically touched her tummy. Then, her eyes went to Drake again. The baby is fine. Pagbibigay asyulan si Drake na tinanabasa ang kanya nasa isip. Nakahinga ng maluwag si Ava. Ava anak, bakit ninyo sinabi? Talong ng kanyang mama. Her mother's face was full of worry. Halata rin galing sa iyak ang ina at ngayon, tila may iyak na naman. Tila pigil na pigil naman ang kanyang ama ang emosyon. Although she could see anger in his eyes. Pag-aalala at panulumo naman ang mababakas sa mukha ng kanyang mga biyanan. Why didn't you tell us, son? Talon ng father-in-law ni Ava. Hindi na kaimik si Drake. You should have told us earlier. We could have done something about it. Sabi ni Mommy Lucy. You almost had an attack a while ago. You shouldn't have worn yourself out. Anang mama ni Ava na napahagulgol ng tuluyan. We thought you'd been healed of that disease. Agad hinina ng kanyang papa ang kanyang mama. Sumobsob ang mama sa liblib ng kanyang papa at doon na rin tuloy ang napaluha ang papa. Did you do it on purpose, Ava? 
matalim ang boses, natanong ng mommy ni Drake. She could see hurt in Drake's eyes and she was instantly hurt too. She could not afford to see him hurt, especially if he was not the only one to be blamed. It is my entire fault, she bravely said to everyone. I did not tell Drake about the risk involved in my pregnancy. Hindi ko rin kaagad yan alaman. He isn't the one to be blamed. Nagdesisyon ako na hindi hinihingi ang opinion niya. Paliwanag ni Ava. At kahit panalaman niya o nino man, hindi pa rin magbabago ang desisyon ko. Bubuhayin ko pa rin ang bata at mas pipiliin ko pa rin ang buhay niya kaysa sarili kong buhay. Kahit ano pa man ang mangyari, mahal ko ang batang to. I would risk my own life for his life. Walalim na ang gabi, ngunit hindi pa rin makatulog si Ava. Total lang dati, pinapalipas silang gabi roon ng mga magulang nila. Hindi na nila muling pinag-usapan ang tungkol sa kanyang kalagayan. Nauunawaan na rin marahil ng mga ito kung ano ang kanyang nararamdaman. Drake went downstairs to get her glass of milk. She was sitting on the lazy boy na nakarap sa veranda. Binuksan ni Ava ang glass panel o pamatanaw ang kalangitan. The skies were full of stars. And starry nights were supposed to be a beautiful sight that could soothe a gloomy feeling. But they were of no use to her right now. She suddenly felt like she was crying. Pinapahid ni Ava yun ang maramdaman ng mga kamay ni Drake sa kanyang balikat. She pulled him closer to her. Bahaga siyang umisol at pinaupo ang asawa sa kanyang tabi. Pinasandig naman siya nito sa dibdib nito. I have a good idea, babe. Ani Drake kapag kuwan. What's it? Let's think of a name of our baby. She smiled. That's a good idea. Well, if it's a baby boy, I want to name it after you. He would be Drake Sullivan Jr. He laughed. Really? Okay then, if that's a girl, I will name it after you. I'm pretty sure she will be as beautiful as you are. I'm sure if he's a boy, he will be a lot like you and surely will be more handsome than you. She giggled at the thought. Well, I can't argue with that, he grinned. And if she's a girl, she will probably be well pampered by you, she added. Nalaking mabuti ang anak natin. Natiti ako. I'm sure you will raise him well. Siguradong bubusagin mo siya sa pagmamahal. Mamahalin mo siya gaya ng pagmamahal mo sa akin. She could feel him trembling. May naramdaman si Ava na pumatak sa kanyang kamay. She looked up to him and saw he was crying, even as he smiled. You will always be around. We will nurture him together. We will see him grow up. We will take care of him together. She was crying now. Makikita natin siyang lumaki and someday, he will also meet someone who would love him as well. Maraing hinagka ni Drake ang kanang kamay. Oh yeah, someone like you. And someone like you too. Dugtong ni Ava. He kissed her forehead. Happy anniversary, baby. Maang nanapatingin siya sa asawa. You remember? Yes. May dinuko to sa bulsa. It was a platinum ring. She was stunned. Simple lamang inatatatampukan na isang brilyanto sa gitna. She felt in love with it instantly. Hinugot ni Drake ang gold ring sa kanyang daliri at baliwalang inihagis iyong sa kung saan. Ipinalit ni Turoon ang hawak na singsing. I have mine too. Iniangat ni Drake ang kaliwang kamay upang ipakita sa kanya ang kaparehang singsing. It's beautiful. Sambit ni Ava. I'm glad you like it. That other ring isn't ours. I did not choose it, nor did you. This ring, on the other hand, I give it to you as a sign of my undying love. Happy fourth anniversary, Drake. He kissed her softly on the lips. It was full of emotion and love he had for her. We will grow old together. We will celebrate our fifth anniversary, tenth, twenty-fifth, fiftieth. We will see our child grow up, marry, and have kids. He will give us lots of grandchildren. Yes, natatawang sang ay ni Ava. They were crying and laughing at the same time, kissing and hugging and listening to each other's heartbeat. Her heart swelled with love for this man. Her heart ached for him all the more. Hindi akalain ni Ava na darating ang ganong sandali. Whatever happens, even if my heart stops beating, it will not stop from loving you. Nakahiga sa stretcher si Ava na itinutulak ng mga nurse. Drake held her hand ever so tightly. She did not want to let go of his hand. Malakas si Ava kapag hawak niya iyon. Drake, do not let go of my hand. Nahihirapang pakiusap niya sa asawa. I won't, baby. I won't. She saw fear and worry in his eyes. This was the moment of truth. There were only two options. She would either make it out alive or not. She wasn't ready to leave Drake yet. I love you, Drake. I love you too. He frantically said. Pagbukas ng operating room, agad na hinarang si Drake na isang nurse. Sorry sir, pero hanggang dito na lang po kayo. Hindi po kayo pwede sa loob. Nakita ni Ava ang panulumo sa mukha ng asawa. Hanggang sa unti-unting sumara ang pinto ng OR. She was going to have her baby by a cesarean section because of her heart condition. 
Maya-maya pa'y unti-unti nang bumigat ang talukap ng kanyang mga mata hanggang sa tuloy ng mapapikit. Drake's image was very clear in her mind. She could imagine his handsome face smiling at her. It gave her more than enough courage to survive this before she finally succumbed to a deep sleep. Drake used all his might to stop himself from crying. He had to be strong for Ava and her baby. He did not pray often or call to God. Actually, he really did not pray at all. But at that very moment, he couldn't really rely on anything or anyone but God. He felt someone touching his back. It was his mother. Kasama nitong kanyang ama at kanyang in-laws. Hindi niya na nakayanan pa na daramang emosyon. Tila batang umiyak si Drake sa mga bisig ng ina. Mommy, I can't live without her. I love her so much. Napahagulgul na si Drake sa sobrang takot at lungkot na nadarama. I won't be able to forgive myself if something happens to her. Hindi ako mabubuhay nang wala siya. Shh! Nothing will happen to Ava. She will be safe. Sila ng anak ninyo. They patiently and worriedly waited outside the OR. Pagkalipas ng ilang oras, sabay-sabay na napatayo sila nang lumabas doon si Dr. Estanislao. Si Drake ang unang lumapit sa doktora. He swallowed the lump in his throat before he asked her about his wife and child. Dr. Estanislao's answer almost made him faint. Six months later, Drake walked slowly as if he were walking on the clouds. He carried two bouquets of white roses. He was at the Ruby Memorial Park. Nasa bayan ng San Felipe na ilang bayan ng pagitan sa Castillo. He had traveled all the way from Castillo to visit the graves of his loved ones. He felt a sudden sense of sadness as he got closer to the graves. Nang marating ang mga iyon, saglit at ititigan ni Drake ang dalawang puntod. Kapag kwan, nilapag sa ibabaw rin ang mga bukay ng bulaklak na kanyang dala. Nag-alay muna siya ng munting panalangin bago sumalampak ng upo sa damuhan. Napansin ni Drake na marami ng damong tumubo sa kaliwang puntod, kaya isa-isa niyang binunot ang mga iyon. When he was finished, his mother realized that he had done for the first time. You know what? I should have been angry with the both of you, but I just can't, lalo na sa'yo. He faced the grave on the left. You see? Nagbubunot na ako ng damo ngayon. Tiyak na kung buhay ka lang pagtatawanan mo ako. I know this is so unlike me. He laughed softly. This is all your fault, but I want to thank you just the same. When you died, a part of me died too. I love you then, but now I'm finally setting you free. Huminga ng malalim si Drake. Nagbago ko mula nang mawala ka. Naging mas mabuting tao na ako ngayon. I've learned so many things. I've learned how to listen. I've learned how to care. I've learned how to worry and how to be sad. How to exist and most of all, I've learned how to truly love with all that I have. Ngumiti siya. Thank you for being part of my life. At wag kayo mag-alala. Napatawad ko na kayong dalawa. He smiled again. Goodbye to the both of you. May mabining hanging humaplos sa kanyang mukha bago siya tuluyan tumalikod sa mga punto din na savanna at uncle niya. Muli, napangiti si Drake habang naglalakad palabas sa sementeryo. Umihip ang malamig na hangin na tila nagbabadya ng kaginhawaan. Tumingala sa kalangitan si Drake. The sky was so clear and blue. He had never seen the sky look as good as it is. Maluwag na ang kanyang pakiramdam na sa ginawang pagpapatawad sa dating kasintahan at tiyuhin. There was only one reason for that. Everything he had and everything he was, right now, he owed it to one person, the one who taught him everything about the world love. Finally, he could go on with his life. He could now be fully happy for the rest of his life. Binilisan na niyang paglakad. Drake! Dagling hinay niya ng tingin ang tumawag sa kanya. He smiled broadly. Tinakbo na niya ang ilang nalalaming distansya sa pagitan nila. Ava was smiling sweetly at him. Yes, she was alive and so was their baby. Nalagpasan namang ito ang panganib nung nanganak ang asawa. Totoong nagmimilagro ang Diyos. Kung may salita lamang nahihigit pa sa love, yun ang maray na nalamdaman niya para kay Ava. Eksaktong pagtapat niya sa asawa, agad sinaklit nito sa bewang at tinangat sa lupa. He wanted to hug her all the time. He wanted to be sure that this was not just part of a beautiful dream. He wanted to feel her to know that she was real, that she was really with him. Tumili si Ava. Drake, ano ka ba? Ibaba mo ako, nakakahiya. Baka may makakita sa atin. So what? They should be envious because I'm the most beautiful woman in the world. Drake? She giggled. She eventually stopped complaining. Instead, she buried her face in his neck. I love you, Drake. She whispered. He grinned and shouted his answer. I love you, Ava Sullivan. I love you so much. He slowly released her and searched her face as if he was memorizing every inch of it. Then, he slowly kissed her as a kiss that promised a happy life with him. They kissed passionately and thoroughly as if there was no tomorrow. 
He slowly ended the kiss and looked straight into her eyes. I love you. You are God sent to me. I will never ever let you go. And I promise to protect you. You and our son are the most beautiful things that ever happened to me. My emotion pahayag ni Gabriel. She tiptoed and kissed him. Speaking of our son, I'm sure he's enjoying his grandfather and grandmother's company. Tumango si Jake bilang pagsangayon. Kapag Juan, inakba niya si Abba at inakay papunta na sa sakyan. Nakasandig ang uno ng asawa sa kanyang dibdib habang naglalakad sila. Pagkarating sa kotse nila ay hinawakan ni Jake ang mga kamay ng asawa. I will give you everything you wished for. I am not a god or a genie, but I will give you what you want as long as it's within my power. Ani Jake. Really? Yes. Do you have any wishes? She stared at him with a dreamy look in her eyes. Baby, what's your wish? He asked her again. Are you happy? She asked in return. I've never been happier in my life. She smiled. Then my wish just came true. Your happiness is the fulfillment of my wish. Wika ni Ava. Then, she pulled him close and kissed him.